Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. Right now, Bassmaster Live in two words. We always say this every time we come here. Two words that are going to raise the heartbeat of any bass angler. Lake Fork, and here we are smack dab in the middle of our 2022 season. On the Bassmaster Elite Series, taking off right now from the Sabine River Authority facility. Going to be fishing underway just moments away. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona, and of course, Lake Fork, we anticipate so much. What we're going to see today is going to look a little bit different from the Lake Fork we have seen before. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that look different, Tommy Sanders, as you see that shoreline right there, about between four and five feet low this time around on Lake Fork. With that being said, though, talking to a lot of our anglers coming into this tournament, suit you're going to like this. Uh, pretty much every one of them said, yeah, we are going over the century mark this week. Possibly several anglers with the potential of that. Look, every time we come to this lake, Magic happens, and trust me, we're going to see a lot of that the next four days. So much looking forward to this day, the first day of four days of fishing here with the full field for the first two days of 92 anglers. This time around, 47 yes. will pass on to day number three. And as you mentioned, the top 10 will go at it for the championship on Championship Sunday. Take a look at the weather's been very, very warm leading up to this after a cooler than normal April and March. But uh, Mark Zona, are we in summertime fishing here? I think we're going to see a little bit of both of that, Tommy Sanders. We're going to kind of dive into that coming off of full moon. A lot of fish actually went shallow yesterday, talking to some of the guides uh -huh. that were out, taking a look at our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, Lake Fork right there. It's a smaller lake than a lot of the venues that we go to in the Bassmaster Elite Series, about 27,300 acres. Take about 15% of that off right now. They were working on the dam, a little dam repair. So we're on a little bit lower water level, and what that's going to do, it's going to condense a lot of our anglers fishing offshore, fishing together, and really a lot of the areas, taking a look at our takeoff right there down near the dam. A lot of our areas that we're going to take a look at throughout this day number one, really, like years past, within five miles of that takeoff, seems like that's going to be a big focus here on day number one. We'll dive into really more exact areas as we go through today into the weekend. It's your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake coming out firing, Tommy Sanders. Absolutely. That's East Texas for you right there and the primo spot and maybe all the world for trophy bass fishing. This place was built in 1980 specifically for that purpose. Welcome to the Bassmasters Studios sponsored by Marathon. Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon. Of course, you've heard from Mark Zona already as well. And guys, it was great to hear you set it up before we got started today on Facebook Live. What's what's the main thing that the prominent point you're looking at early today, Ron? I think we're going to have to look at some of those guys fishing offshore. We know that there could be a mix of a little bit of both shallow and deep, but Lake Fork, not like Zona said, about 20% less water than normal. I'm wondering how many offshore spots have a lot of anglers on them sharing that water. But hey, Century Club is going to get broken this week, no doubt. All right, Such, what do you think? Oh, the 10 pounders coming in, the big fish. You know, last year we had uh, Lee Livesey with that final day catching eight, nine pounders left and right, 42 pounds, three ounces, the third highest total ever, and the five fish limit, 112 pounds. Going to see that again. I can't wait. Let's go. All right. <laughs> well, Z, uh, you, men you mentioned it, the smaller, smaller space to fish for these guys, and you talked about the, the important spots through the years that are going to play again this time, but do you, so many of these anglers, we talked to them before the tournament began, I, I, I got to get my timing right. I got to get in the right rotation of all these spots. Is that, is that important in your mind as well? I, I do. I think that's that's very important, Tommy. I think one of the things that you're going to see today, and number one, Lee Livesey said to us yesterday, man, it's fishing a little bit tough. I said, what's it going to take to win? He said about 133 pounds, I think. So not quite <laughs> as tough. So, but anyway, really the thing to watch, if you're watching Bassmaster Live, to watch throughout today is the guys that try to make that running around a rotation, different areas happening, or as much pressure as you're going to see offshore, are the guys going to excel that get into an area, Tommy, and just put their trolling motor down and own an offshore spot and do not leave and wait for that bite to come to them while owning an area and not really letting other anglers in? I think you're going to see 
a lot of squatting in this tournament throughout the weekend. All right, very much looking forward to it. This is a very special week. Uh, uh, a week when we're suffering a loss, we're mourning, we're lamenting the loss of, of the primal figure in everything we do. The Bassmasters, Ray Scott, of course, we're celebrating his life as well. Ray passed away on May 8th, and uh, man, oh man, we would not have a sport that looks like it does today. I don't know what kind of sport we'd have without this guy. Everything traces back, Mark Zona, to Ray Scott. Uh, it absolutely does. It, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to know Ray very well, and and. Looking at what Ray, I've thought about it a lot this week, and and Ray was very a very kind individual. You know, when when I just started my career, he had me at his house, and and I learned a lot about Ray. And most of all, none of us are here. None of the anglers, none of the production, we're not here together without Ray. But I think what Ray's biggest impact was was conservation. There, without Ray Scott, there was no catch and release, and you don't have a lake that you can say that you're going to catch over a hundred pounds of bass and I, and I think that was Ray's biggest gift to the world of bass fishing. Absolutely. He was a big picture guy. There's no doubt about it. People say, well, Ray was a shameless promotion promoter. Thank goodness for that. Shameless promoters was. have built so many of the great that go. Let's go to Henry Ford all the way back to today. I mean, shameless promoter. He took the sport to the world. Hey, there's no doubt Ray would sell you the shirt off of his back. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it, seriously, the one the the one thing that that Ray always did is is cared about the world of professional bass, bass fishing in general. Um, and there was a lot to be learned from from you know what you, Ray preached and protecting you know besides conservation is, is really protecting the sport of bass fishing and he and he did it pretty darn good he was the leader uh basically since this sport truly started absolutely and a great inventor as well he invented the most prominent tournament by a long shot in all the world, the Bassmaster Classic. It was an experiment, and look what happened. Tommy, I think that I think that it's incredible when you think back to that story, sitting in a hotel room watching other professional sports saying, hey, we need to take the sport of bass fishing and make it a sport. It's probably the longest running hobby ever in the world. He ran it from a hotel room, made the first tournament, had hundreds of anglers from across the country show up, and it turned into Bassmaster, and 52 years later, it is the best tournament in the sport, is the Bassmaster Classic, and I know so many anglers, so many fans' memories stem back from that event. You were in here in the studio running a couple of days ago. We had a, a, three or four legends of the sport in here talking about Ray. They talked about his, uh, you know, his generosity. He, he made everyone feel special. He treated these guys like kings, especially come classic times. The, the anglers, their families, that meant a lot to these anglers. Absolutely. And I think everyone, it's, it's very interesting to look at all of these photos here and images of years and decades past, um, we all owe that guy a ton. In fact, we owe him our career, Absolutely. hands down. Absolutely. I think one thing that they they mentioned, those anglers who have, who have won the biggest tournaments and lost the biggest tournaments, when you weren't catching them, Ray had a way on stage to lift you up and play and poke with you so that you would talk. But then when you did catch them, he had the ability to sell you to the world and raise your platform and your profile more than anybody else in the sport. All week long for the rest of this season, for sure, our minds are gonna be uh, on Ray Scott and his legacy, everything, everything that's here because of Ray Scott. It all goes back, you, you trace the, the, the branches down to the tree and the, the, the main branches, Ray Scott, and that's what we're uh, celebrating. And all these anglers out here, these 92 anglers, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. Death fighter. And our anglers are getting ready. There's just a few moments at takeoff. Some of them are already getting set up. Lee Libacy right there. And boy, what a tournament. What a show he put on. Possibly one of the greatest, certainly the greatest day of fishing we've ever seen yeah. on Bassmaster Live on that final day with 42 pounds and three ounces. In a Jack Link's book of the beast is all about Lee Livesey this time, and day number four here at this Bassmaster Elite Event 1 2021. There he is. Look like a good one. Yes! Me! Finally! Me! Need four more, baby. Yeah!
9-2 to start the day, baby. Look at that beautiful Lake Fork bass. Oh, it was beautiful. A beautiful effort. Everything flawless. His timing, his choices, his execution. That's what happens when it all comes together. Let's get out to Lee, Lee, Lee Livesey live. It'll be really interesting to watch Lee Livesey's day. He said he feels that this tournament could be won squatting offshore and said he is absolutely not going to do that. And during the Yamaha pre-show with Ronnie and Such, one of the things that Livesey said is his offshore school's not firing till later and wondering if he can get in on some of those areas that are going to be so crowded offshore. Lee Livesey live. A lot of guides out this morning. A lot of that good stuff's got people on it. Uh, we're just going to fish today. We're going to start shallow. Not even really shad spawn stuff, just little shallow bars and points and stuff. That's what I just got a little, little pond dam right here I'm fishing. Just trying to get one or two bites. There's not a big group of fish that lives here. I'm going to go cranking. Uh, I'm just going to try to catch one on his jig for four or five more casts before I start cranking them. I hadn't seen anything yet, but it's just uh, it's going to be a rotation of shallow spots this morning with this cloud cover. When I say shallow, I'm talking, you know, five to eight foot of water. And then we're going to start bumping out to that eight to 12, and then the 12 to 18, and then the 18 to 22. And at the end of the day, you'll see us out there, you know, throwing that 500 DD out there in 25 to 28. If we can fit in, it's all about fitting in because this place fish is small. I might have to throw my plug up there. The blue herons keep showing up. That's the game plan, just uh, not gonna get stuck on one spot. I got a lot of schools found, and you know, everything got found that I found, so. It's just gonna be a rotation and time and deal. I'm gonna catch my fish. I'm gonna get my weight after lunch if I fit in, 100%. Everything before lunch is just a bonus. And you never know, it's fork. I pulled up here and caught 40 pounds many a time when they're right. They ain't right. <laughs> I would have done caught one. get right there and go down, but sometimes they'll get right in there too, though. Hundred and twelve pounds and five ounces was yeah. the total four day weight for the win last year. It was the second win with the Bassmaster Elite Two. And we've seen Lee Livesey here three different times. We saw him in the fall, have a top 10. We saw him in the May time period not do well and miss the cut. But last year, kind of lining up, he said, hey, this isn't the time of the year that I should win. But on that final day, he used all of his local history, all of his knowledge. And boy, what a record setting day. Third biggest bag ever, the biggest day on Bassmaster Live ever. Yeah, to capture that day on Bassmaster Live, fishing a top water bait. And we talked about that day at length. Top water. Tommy, you what nailed it earlier bad. today. It, oh it was absolutely God. flawless execution, and a lot of those bass that he caught, yeah. he got to see those bass busting up on Gizzard Chad the day before yeah. and just kind of landed on them the final day. And one of the things to kind of watch from that beatdown from Lee Livesey to watch today, there are several anglers that are talking about the remnants, kind of the tail end of the shad spawn. And I think there's a lot of anglers that are going to bypass that first 90 minute shad spawn bite just to fit in, to get their rights offshore on some of those key areas to where they're just kind of going to squat in and totally ignore that shad spawn bite. One angler that's not going to do that probably lives shallow, but he did say he put a transducer on his boat for this tournament. Your <laughs> angler of the year leader, John Cox.
All right, guys, we, uh, we're at the first stop, and um, we got some nice cloud cover. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of go down here, throw in the Berkeley Cane Walker. I've caught some big ones here before, and it just, it's those big deep fish that when they get pushed up against this wall, man, you just catch some giant ones. So I'm, uh, you know, we're just gonna run down this stretch and uh, give it a try and see if we can, you know, it'd be awesome just stay here, you know, all day and just fish back and forth. But uh, we'll see, we'll see if they cooperate this morning. I'm excited though. We got, Everything's perfect. It's a little bit of cloud. It's got a little bit of wind. Um, you know, something should happen here. <laughs> John Cox with the top 20 last year. It was 16th the year before that. And John Cox, of course, our progressive angler of the year points leader. At this point, what a fantastic season he has had. It's gotten tight at the top as well. We've had some 20 to maybe 30 point gaps. But after Lake Chickamauga, John Cox with just a 10 point lead over Brandon Pollock, 15 point lead over Clifford Perch. Tommy, the whole top 10, about 59 points separated from first to 10. Oh, that, that race is far from established right now. Brandon Pollock sneaking up on John Cox. Certainly a story we'll need to follow. Of course, Brandon, one of the favorites as we come in to this Lake Fork tournament right here, Clifford Perch, David Mullins, and all the rest. Everybody getting set up. Everybody getting ready to catch them at Lake Fork. The Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Better part of seven hours coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite from Lake Fork. I don't think we can offer you a better deal than that. We've got four days of that, in fact, leading all the way to Championship Sunday here at this fifth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We've got 92 anglers out there. It's all catch, weigh, and release as well. We need to mention that to you. All the, all the uh, Total Juicy on Bass Track are going to be official, official weights here. We, uh, we welcome that opportunity. Let's go to the, well, the winner, well, second place last year. The tournament before that, he was our champion, the century belt earner, Patrick Walters. Don't get luckier than that, do you? <laughs> you ready? Hold him up off that. There you go. That's what it is. 213. I'll take it. Hey, we didn't zero. Number one. Stop water. Let's see if we can do it. Thank you, sir. Hang on. You're good. All right. He was up there shallower. Like it's, he was on the mud line. Did you see the blow up? Yeah. It was just like a suck in. He barely. I didn't even know about sucking in until it came out. I know. Ew. That was the catch, weigh, and release that we uh, mentioned yeah. there. 14 inches is the legal limit, but there's a slot limit that comes into play there as well. Right? Yeah, right. the legal minimum this week and in tournaments is 14 inches, but normally it's a 16 to 24 inch slot. Any fish in that range for other tournaments has to be released and doesn't count. For this event, because it's catch, weigh, release, anything over 14 counts. If you catch one over 24, though, you get to bring it back to the weigh-in, and we got to see a couple of those every day of every event we've been here. Head judge Tim Cook down there has a whole crew and trains him on uh, the scales and what to do and everybody's got to zero it out. <laughs> Just let it sit for away. a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking to see, I was like, should I throw one out to the middle here? And then that guy just came up and got it. I probably, probably got to measure him real quick. Let's see. He's got to be 14. Oh yeah, 
Fish number one. One eight. One eight. Wow. Those are those big ones I was talking about right there. <laughs> Lake Fork Giant. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get one of these big ones. Maybe two or three. That'd be the goal today. Let's get five, six pounders. It was Judge Whit Smith there from Florida. He uh, <laughs> writes the weight down on a scorecard, then he'll enter it in Bass Track. And it yes. is official, but they do have to sign the sheet the score and turn it in. Official. Yeah. Gotta, score sign it. Gotta sign yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Like a golf like cart. They we weigh it, in. Then they, yeah, right, they sign it right after. So talking to Keith Combs and Lee Libacy about the lower water working on the dam, and I didn't even think about this as we get back over to Patrick Walters on the west side of Lake Fork. I said, who do you think to Combs and Libacy? with this low water condition from working on the dam that this really favors. And back about a decade ago, when they had those Toyota Bass Classics here, it was almost identical water level being down somewhere That's between three and where five they're gonna feet. That's over there on that side. Because like that. of the drought That's back then. One. Tucker was over there. She must be hooked sideways or something. Come to the back. She's not that big, but God, she looked big when she bit it. Hands are shaking. I'm fired up. Circle was over there. Ooh. Oh. 312. 312. There we go. Thank you. I was like, they're going to be right there. <laughs> 213 and a 312 for Patrick Walters to start. Took our unofficial lead early, but Ed Locker just jumping in now with the Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the day so far. Just a five and a half. We should totally double that this week. So Ronnie, what I'm what I was talking about is even though these are extreme lower water conditions, they're not extreme to a, a certain percentage of our field that has been here when the water's been this low. Guys like John Cruz, you look at a Stetson Blaylock, guys that were here a decade ago and already understand how this lake fishes with lower water. Granted, a lot of our field, they've not been here during this these conditions, but Lee Livesey right, so. said there's a percentage of these guys that definitely know the lower water conditions this time of year. Z, did you ever film any shows at Lake Fork when the water was low? I know you did them in the summer, but was it drought? I mean, real low, low, low? This is no joke. The one that I taped with Combs where we had, you know, 35 to 40 pounds, um, it was this time of year and it was four feet low. Stay down. Stay out of the trees. I'm gonna get right where you're at, Orville. Mm -hmm. Six cents, 300 DD in the face. Good way to start right there, baby. Mm -hmm. Four something. Mm -hmm. Bait change and an angle. It's the same angle, same bait. I caught him in practice. Threw a jig in there, threw a top water in there, threw a square bill in there, nothing. Picked this up. First cast, I hit that shell, he ate it. You ready? Zero. He ain't a five, but he's all over it. Five. Oh. 
five pounder to start the day. We're gonna try to get to 25, see where we end up, boys. One right there for Lee Livesey to start his event, five pounder. You're gonna see Lee Livesey probably doing a lot of running around today now that he's qualified for the Bassmaster Classic via the Bassmaster Open Series just a couple weeks ago. But Ronnie, going back to what you were saying right there, a lot of these offshore fish, and that's that's more of a mid-range area that Lee Livesey's in, is they just don't bite until afternoon. In fact, if you talk to a lot of the top guides here, James Caldemeyer, who's helped us in a lot of our Elite Series events, it's almost <laughs> those mega schools, man, they're from one o'clock to dark. You saw that? You saw the shaddy spit out of his mouth when he jumped? He spit I thought, like. I thought he spit his face. Now he spit like three shad out of his mouth. This wind should help today for sure, though. Shad exactly the same size as my bait, too. Yeah, but this isn't one of those Tennessee River offshore deals. No. These fish don't fire due to current and generating power. It's just they feed in the afternoon offshore. Damn. Not sure which way he's gonna go yet. Goodness gracious, you're not that big. Yes, six cents, 300 DD in the face, boys. Halo HFX cranking rod, seven six medium heavy. That's my signature series, that's the deal. Not hook deep, you just hook good. Zero. Ain't as big as the other one, but it's close. It's gonna be a four. Four two. Four two. Little four two. Look at that healthy Lake Fork bass. Woo! All right. Keep them coming. Noon got here fast. Yeah, well, Tommy, I was going to say, he, yeah, he just dang. said that he switched it up from a topwater and a jig and a square built. That is the 300 DD is about a 14 to 20 at deepest crankbait. So a little bit different angle, he said, and a little bit deeper crankbait hit, hit what he wanted. Yeah, and Lee Livesey making the comment that there has been a massive at, uh, amount of usual this pressure. comes off this, this point. And I caught those two fish with that last one. A couple of fish came with it. It kind of got around the boat. It's what you don't want, actually. But it's just, you get them so fired up, they follow those other fish in. There's one. There's still one back there, though. Little guy. He wasn't big. I could tell he was just barely hooked. Oh, man. Got another one hit it right there, that cast. Brought them to the boat that time. Like six of them behind me. Come on, stay fired up. Don't bust up. One of the things to watch with Lee Livesey, he said, with all the pressure that's been on this lake, 
and how condensed it is, Libacy feels. A lot of the northern semi-offshore, I mean, this is not going to be the typical offshore deal that we're going to see down near the dam is Lee Livesey making the comment that he felt a lot of the schools up north, you know, not within two or three miles of Little Caney where we've seen it go down in years past. He said they just receive a lot less pressure. They're not as big as schools, you know. Livesey making the comment that there was 100 fish schools near the dam. He said these are a lot less you know, calling it 10 to 15 fish schools, but receiving a lot less of a beating when they get offshore on the north end of Fork. Lucy currently with a three and a quarter pound lead over the rest of the field. I will say for those who were watching Bass Track wondering if he did catch four, um, Marshall and cameraman both input those fish, so that's why they're doubled up. He only ah. has those two keepers, plus that one he lost, so. Good start for him, though, a five and a four to kick it off for Lee Livesey. Now, Z, what was the talk about the gale force winds? Did that keep some anglers off this lake? They had a couple weeks where there were high winds every day. Busted them up. I think in Texas, all the way to New York, there was three months of high winds. <laughs> but but no, no, look, man, it, this is Lake Fork and, and Seuss, just like Gunnersville and other, you know, destination Chickamauga lakes that we go to, no matter what the weather is, there is still going to be pressure. And, and you know, talking to a lot of the guides, talking to Livesey, it's you been know, a usual. Kind of the other thing is early. when these fish start to get offshore, like we're starting to see in this tournament, they're not smart it, when when they do start to bite the fish are not that intelligent they're dumb but there's little very 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 small small feeding windows it's not like they oh, eat all yeah, day because livacy Le saying that man he marked a school that had you know a hundred fish in it i said will you start on that he said no they they're there they just don't bite till later good start for our defending champion lee livacy uh oh Ooh. Lee Livesey said he is definitely going to gamble this time around being in the Bass Master Classic where he has done that. And seeing Livesey getting a little bit away from the crowd, switching over to a six cents crankbait right there. Fishing a little bit deeper, but closer to the bank. Lee Livesey already this morning, your powerful replay of the day. And I think it's fair to say, Tommy Sanders, he will be the power pole replay of the day more than once throughout this event. Here, safe bet. Safe bet for sure. Yeah, just jump out. Oh. Lee Livesey, more cannot, hours on this listen, place than anyone else in the field, right? Tommy, let's not give a power pole replay of the day to a five pounder anymore throughout this tournament. It's I, just, it's not, come on now. I, I bet we can get away with that. I bet we can do just what you requested there. Some good stuff going on out there from the man you expected it from. Ooh. Lee Livesey, that's for sure. Our leader, we got our double entry straightened out. It's, it is Ed yes. Loughran still on top. Thank yes. you, Ronnie, for that. You love With that, 10 don't pounds you? even, Lee Livesey in second place, Patrick Walters. Second place last year, third place right now. Whoa! Yeah! Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the Sims Bass Master Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. Hey, what's up, everybody? Bass Master Elite Series Pro Keith Combs. Over my shoulders, one of my favorite lakes on the planet, Lake Fork. And the reason I like it so much is, I mean, you got to throw down here. You got to catch big ones to stay in the game. Uh, it's going to take a lot of weight this week. You know, it's it's hot, it's it's uh, mid-May. Nevertheless, Lake Fork's gonna produce some massive weights this week. I know it's gonna be over 100 pounds. Um, it's just a question of how much. Good thing about Lake Fork is it happens fast. And uh, as far as like my pattern, uh, I'm gonna stick with my strengths and my number one confidence bait for fish in deep water right there. That's a Strike King 6XD Chartreuse Powder Blue. Same color works everywhere in this state. And uh, I'm gonna keep it glued in my hand probably probably a good 50 or 60% of the day. Um, just because I'm confident in it and I've just caught a ton of big fish 
all over Texas and specifically at Fork. So this is one tournament you don't want to miss. Keith Combs oh, second place oh, here yes. in 2020, but more famous for a three-day effort to TTBC in 2014 when he caught 110 pounds in three days. Yeah, exactly, and Keith that's Combs. actually when I taped that show you were talking about Ronnie and Keith Combs fishing very close you know, when to where that show up went down. It's gonna happen. Are you just gonna pull up on a place that's gonna just be a dud? You know, we've hit a couple duds so far. These are all places that the, you know they sometime today they'll be there. We just gotta get our timing down. And stay patient, fish for five, that's the key. You can catch more than five, but you better be fishing, you know, putting yourself in position to fish for those five that are six plus here. Said it happens fast, Shane LaHue in the lead of five, 12, and four, seven. It's over 10 pounds on two fish and in the lead. Just like Livesey, Keith Combs talking about his practice and really the history of the offshore and kind of mid-depth so range fish. Of like Fork does Definitely saying three, mornings man. have been very, very tough out here and it kind of implodes after long. I'm sure that'll happen when Dave and Davey do their show. <laughs> <laughs> it never fails. Having a time, just a time, just yep. having a time. Yeah. It's a pretty strong, about 15 mile an hour south wind. I don't know what the gust would reach up to, but it's a sustained 15 from the south right now, which is blowing obviously warmer air in, but. Supposed to blow those clouds away this afternoon as well. A lot of the country is, on one of my favorite things, the wind finder deal. A lot of the country is in purple, which is zero to five miles an hour. And Texas specifically is in blue, which is around over 10, maybe 15 oh, to 20. Geez. Oh my gosh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, did you see that thing in it? I was like, oh my gosh. Just let me get one on it. There's one. There's one. Look at that. Smoke the game longer. <laughs> yeah, every time I'm like, oh, I've had enough of this. And then, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. One, there we go. There's one down right there. Four more. Good. Oh my God. Y'all already hit that thing? Oh. Ah, uh, five pounder. One down. that bite right there for John Cox that was that was a nibble one of the things that Cox said we said it earlier that I asked him I said did you do any fishing offshore for this tournament he said yeah because this was the tournament that he put a transducer on for his console unit where he can idle around and, and I said but you do you I, I, I kind of dived into that with John Cox yesterday he has gone entire seasons Ronnie without having a depth finder at his steering wheel. He Entire to, season. He didn't have to work about, worry about it the first five events of the season, including the Classic, didn't need it. But now, maybe just a couple well, events he'll need it. He did say, he said, I did some idling in this tournament uh, for practice and wondered, what am I doing out here? <laughs> Back to Lee Livesey Live. Trying to get it to get the right angle to not get hung up.
They gone, I guess. Short-lived fury flurry. There he is. Getting back there with you, Jake. Stay out of that tree. That's a good one. Come over here. Trying to keep him up out of those trees while I'm cranking on him so hard. Lake Fork, baby. Mm. Good bait change right there. Good bait change. Mm -hmm. Orville. Zero. Five pounder. Five pounder, baby. Five pounder. Oh. Six. Come on, Orville, you're killing me. Let's go, Orville. On now. <laughs> Six, baby. He's going to have to call it, Orville. 515. All right. I mean, he's just bouncing all over it. So there's a 515 right at six. Good bait change right there. Switched up to a little hair jig. My buddy Scott from Hog Farmer. He's the man. Keep it rolling. 515, Orville. I sure wanted to be that sick. He was all over it. We just, he <laughs> went up now like this. Orville. He just got to you know, look at it and call it. Get on over there. No doubt. Come on, give me another one of them bad boys. Oh, no, wrong cast, Jake. I'm actually going to switch with you, Jake, just so I don't have to keep doing that. Orville, if you'll sit where my bush light logo is, that'll help me a lot. You <laughs> sit as far as you can that way without hitting. <laughs> Lee Livesey in his element right now. He says, "Keep it rolling, cameraman, because I'm rolling right now. We're on a roll. We always know we're on a roll when we visit with Davey Hyde. He is on site right now. And Davey, man, oh man, just exactly what we expected from Lee Livesey, right? Oh, absolutely. And Lee Livesey, obviously a favorite coming into to this tournament. This is where he, you know." became so famous as one of the best fishermen in Texas and then just recently won an open here. Uh, it's won two Bassmaster Elite Series, three Bassmaster wins in only four years. So expect to see a lot more great things from Lee Livesey. And certainly this week is one week we want to watch him each and every day. But the wind is blowing. It's been blowing out of the south for several days. But but here's the thing that I've heard. And, and so many times these anglers, they, they poor mouth. They just like, well, you know, I caught a good one, but, but, you know, I don't know. It's fishing small. But I've heard so many anglers this week say, man, there could be all of the top 10 on the final day could be 100 pounds. That's absolutely incredible to think about. Davey, one of the things that we talked about early was obviously the story coming in this tournament was the dam repairs that they had looking at three and a half to five foot of water low and Livesey and Combs making the comment that they felt a lot of the anglers that fished here in the drought conditions basically eight to ten years ago were at a distinct advantage for where these offshore schools are at and where they live because they have fished through those conditions. With that being said, Lake Fork still, even when it's at a normal pool, fishes small, and we hear that it's going to fish smaller. With the with the modern day electronics and the mapping, even though those anglers fished here already in a drought a decade ago, there really are not that many secrets, except for when you look at a Libacy that knows these very very small isolated one cast schools. Yeah, you're exactly right, Z, and, and that's why we've set up here because Lake Fork looks so different. You can see that, you know, it's a, it's about five feet below normal pool. 
but these fish have a lot of places to hide. There's no doubt about it. But you, you nailed it, Z. With modern day electronics, you can see these fish in the timber where when, when we were here, I guess six or seven years ago when it was uh, low like this, there were some guys that, that found where those fish were just, just by fishing. You know, back in the day, so many of the schools of fish, you had to just put your trolling motor down and make casts, make casts. But now, most of these anglers, it's really incredible. They'll spend half of their day, maybe two thirds of their day, just idling, looking at their electronics, whether you're following a, a, a creek channel or, or the main lake channel or in the timber. You can see these fish. Patrick Walters has, has mastered that. We, we've seen him come here and get in the timber and actually search and look for these fish around these isolated little clumps of trees, just like you said. Davey, one of the things that is known about Lake Fork is, and we've talked about this a little bit this morning, is every one of the anglers and guides that we talked to said, it, this tournament's gonna be one offshore, no doubt. There will be mega bags caught offshore but those offshore schools just do not fire until afternoon. In fact, a lot of them don't fire until our weigh-in is over from the history of this lake. Why is it that these fish, you know, the draggers and crankers offshore don't seem to catch them early when this is not one of those Tennessee River generation bites that we've seen? Yeah, it's it's a very different lake, Z, and and I don't know if I have the the right answer to be honest with you. I've I've listened to a lot of the locals, uh, the guides. You know, you've heard this, and it's it's really hard to explain. We have an early bite here right now. There's still a little bit of shad spawn happening real early. You know, you, you're going to see a, a John Cox, people like that, catch some fish early. There's some some brim that are bedding. You'll see a little bit of that early, but those offshore fish. And, and I think maybe it's because they feed during the night and, and, and they just roam more, but they don't set up on these targets, on these, you know, you mentioned the little small clusters of trees or, or a, a hard spot out offshore. They don't seem to set up until during the day and, and in the afternoon. And I've talked to Lee Livesey just this week about this. And, and, and he said, you know, a lot of his best places he won't even go to until the afternoon. And it's, it's unlike, you know, the Tennessee River, different places we've been through the years. You want to get to your best place, you know, right at first thing when, at takeoff. But, but this place fish is very, very different. And I think a lot of these fish just, just roam at night and they come back and set up on these, these targets, these, these pieces of cover during the day, midday and then afternoon. Like you said, a lot of the best fishing here on this particular lake seems to be like from four o'clock in the afternoon on till, on till it gets dark. But we will see a lot of good fish caught here in the morning, even though it might not be the best time of the day to fish. Hey, Davey, there's no doubt we're going to taser Such by the end of the weekend with his BFAs coming out of nowhere, going in a break. Your question for you right now is, Give us your prediction of total weight to win this thing, because it's been interesting to hear. I've not talked to one angler that said under 100 pounds. Yeah, you know, you know, Z and, and Mercer and I were talking earlier just just a few minutes ago, actually, about, you know, 132 pounds is is a number. It's the record for a reason. It's hard to do that. It's so hard to do that. And, and, and you talk to the local guys, you talk to Lee Livesey, you know, somebody with a lot of experience here, and they think, man, you could catch 30 pounds for three days and you could catch, have a 40 pound day. But of all my years fishing tournaments and four day tournaments, it, it's just so hard to do. Uh, I'm not saying we can't break that, the 132, but I think we'll be over 100, but it's just so hard for four straight days uh, with the pressure and, and all those different things. I mean, you can have a, a bad day, and I hate to say it this way, but, you know, if you have a 21, 22-pound day, it makes that almost impossible. So I'm going to say 110 to 115 Dear pounds self, to win this, but I, but I do think we'll have uh, eight or ten anglers that have 100 pounds. Just absolutely incredible. Davey, thank you so much. Good stuff from Davey Hyde there. Of course, he and Dave Mercer will be taking over our coverage on site a little bit later. We are very much looking forward to that. So Davey's is 110 pounds to win, but he thinks 8 to 10 will do it. So we're going to have everyone within a fish catch on the final day from basically if he's saying that. 8 to 10. That's exactly right. Fine yeah. by me. <laughs> Why not? 
Shane LaHue back in the lead, 18 and a half pounds. Wow. On four fish. Combs after a couple of visits to places that didn't really fire. Got something going now. Board. Ready? You hook it up. I'm ready. All right. Ready to go. Both look at it. Better pull him off a, pull him up just a hair there. Okay. Get off that carpet now. Three fifteen. from Keith Combs. He is on the board right now. The man who puts... I'll us. get back to that horrible, Tommy. <laughs> I, I, I think we tighten will get back up. to horrible sooner rather than later. But Shane LeHue, the man on top right now. 18 and a half pounds early on. First couple of hours of fishing here on Lake Fork. Lee Libacy, big fast start for our defending champion and local for sure. David Williams, Patrick Walters, Ed Lochran rounding out our top five and so much more yet to come from here at Lake Fork. The size of that bass. Live coverage of the Sims Bass Master Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. Get you back out on the lake live real fast here. We got plenty Whoa. of coverage coming up here from day number one of the Sims Bass Master Elite at Lake Fork, and that delicious shoreline vegetation is now all visible. It's not in the water, it's not fishable anymore. So much of it right now. And uh oh, what do we got, dude? Skeeter Boat's big fish alert here, Caleb Kufal. Six pounds, 10 ounces is what I got on Bass Track. He's jumped up to eighth place with two fish. Kufal killing it. New Iberia, Louisiana. Been doing very well the last couple of years here, but it's Shane LeHue from North Carolina on top of our leaderboard. 18 and a half pounds already in the first couple of hours of fishing on Lake Fork. Lee Livesey surprising no one off to a quick start. David Williams. Steve Kennedy now moving up the leaderboard ahead of Patrick Walters, who's in fifth place. Ed Lochran from Eastern Seaboard, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. Had a good tournament here in 2020. Also hanging in there, Todd Otten, Caleb Kufal, who's uh, knocked him dead this past year, yep. for sure. Two top fives the last two events. Yeah. Let's get out to Brandon Cobb, the winner here. In 2019, one of his two wins that year as a rookie. Is that a fish or a stump? It's a fish. A little bit bigger, still not. No, I hooked him in the belly. That's why he felt better. Ooh, he about got me. We'll see. Yep. Yes, sir. 14 and a quarter. Probably not even worth our effort to uh, scale zero. All right. Probably not worth our effort to weigh these, but stop. Probably about the same, isn't he? <laughs> Maybe an ounce bigger? One, 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 one seven. seven. Yeah, I thought he was an ounce bigger. <laughs> She's a little older than the other one. I'm going for six four with five. I was going there. That's where I was going. That deep school right there. One seven. Thank you. <laughs> Hundred and fourteen pounds. Yeah, I felt like a better one. I hooked him. Real funny. Book in by a 37 pound bag on day three. Really? Yeah. That week. He's another little baby, I believe, though. 
He's like a two and a half. I mean, a, a big one. <laughs> no, he's not a two and a half. He's like another one seven. <laughs> He might be a 111, what do you think? Yeah, he's got some belly on some shad in It's fun, it's just not uh... I don't even think I need to measure him if, so. if, if those others were keepers. Yes, it's scale zero. Okay. Probably a 110, 111. Oh, he's two, big. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Two, two. 2019, he had that hyphen moved over I one space there. Tommy, 11 one was a big fish. Yeah. Well, she's, I asked her that last time. She said it didn't matter. Oh, well, I'm not. There we go. As long as we get pretty quick, I'm not. You want to come up here? No, you're good. Got <laughs> a bit better one up there. Seven anglers with the fish on bass track. Greg Hackney just jumped into our top ten. Let's get over to our last year's progressive angler of the year, Seth Fighter from Minnesota. Yeah, Tommy and Seth Fighter said he just practiced backwards for this event. Started the week offshore idling around and then went shallow and said, man, if he could rewind that. He said his rotation in practice with said if he could have basically started shallow on Sunday and then went deep, he said, man, I my fish are leaving shallow by the minute. But we did hear, and we talked about this earlier, a lot of guides that were out here yesterday said there was a wave, another wave of fish that came up, talking to James Caldemeyer yesterday, of big ones afternoon when all of our anglers were off of the water yesterday on their off day. Some anglers like that off day. Some anglers do not like that off day where they kind of lose touch uh, with the lake. Scared, terrified, petrified, mortified. But we'll just keep at it. Uh, practice sucked. No other way to put it. And you know there's gonna be a bunch of 30 pound bags today, so. And honestly, I'll be happy if I catch five. And, that probably ain't enough here, but we'll start with one first. Ain't had a bite yet, but I haven't been doing much early in the mornings. The few that I have been catching are kind of midday. It's got to be a weird feeling, Tommy, launching your boat in a slug fest with not much to your credit. No. You know, some a lot of guys had. You know, I, I have two or three big fish photos from practice and people think I'm on them, but I did them on three different techniques, three different, I, I have no idea. I got to string together five different spots, hoping I catch one just to have a good limit. Yeah. Hummingbird, bird's eye view, John Cox right here. In the calmest area right now of Lake Fork. And oh, yeah. if there's one common theme you guys could definitely tell this morning so far, every one of our anglers has verbally said it will get better as the day goes on the mornings have been brutally slow and then this lake sort of fires even whether you're shallow or deep oh that's the one we're talking about there oh my gosh oh my gosh trade you get that <laughs> Oh my gosh, stay on there. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 come on, baby. Let me get her in. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's just awful. <laughs> oh, we're screwed. We're going to be throwing this thing all day. <laughs> Come here, baby. <laughs> oh, 
There we go. That's number two right there. Two down. Oh my gosh. Was that freaking awesome? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Oh gosh. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Jeez. I'm fusing 19 hooks on that thing. Gosh. Oh, that was so awesome. Beautiful. All right, I'm out. Oh, I got the shakes. I knew something was gonna happen. I've had the shakes before we even started throwing. 510. 510, there we go. There's two down. Gosh, look at that fish. Oh, oh, I love it. <laughs> if that fish would've come off, I would've said it was a 10. As hard as it hit that thing, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Uh, 510. Tommy, that might have been the finest drone strike ever. Oh yeah. In the history of the Bassmaster. What is going oh, on? Oh my gosh. Oh, did you? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's the kind of drone strike you want. Wow. I see what you did there. Well, I think that's yeah. Wes Miller running the drone right there. I think Wes even set the hook when that thing went. <laughs> Good stuff. What a season for John Cox. He's got one top five, two top tens. No cuts missed under his belt. That's why he is our progressive angler of the year leader. He did his job for the first four events of the season in his territory, in his wheelhouse. He did his job. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, that was it. That is fantastic. Wow. I asked Trey, the camera guy, if he got that. I think he did. Watch. <laughs> oh, goodness oh, gracious. Fish was very unhappy with that cane walker. <laughs> Get out of my face. Puts John Cox in third with 16 pounds, five ounces. Mr. Greg Hackney just jumped into second with a 614. He's up to Ooh. 16 pounds, 13 ounces on three fish. Be really interesting if we are able to have a camera with Hackney due to Obviously, low water conditions, great fish right there with John Cox. Low water conditions, I think I read it with Chris Zaldane. There is not that grass option of guys that are swim jigging or we've had, you know, obviously in years past, we've had guys sight fishing this time of year on this lake. But there still are, besides remnants of a little bit of a shad spawn, there is a bluegill spawn going on with the moon that we're in. Be interesting to see how many guys end up catching them in that one to five feet of water stumps standing timber where there's still remnants of bass moving up and spawning on those stumps great fish right there with john cox no doubt you can see the aforementioned dam under repair there in the background Let's just stay with cox for a minute seems to uh, be a little dialed in on what's happening Oh man, I'm uh, I'm trying to just tell myself to breathe, but I don't know about you guys, but I mean, you're watching this thing. It's coming. <laughs> the Berkeley Cam Walker is coming through these wet little bit of ripples so good. I just feel like any second another one's going to eat it. And like, it's not like they're just slurping it too. They were like, you know, it's hitting like, you know, like those great whites hit those baby seals. Like it's, it's impressive. <sighs> Oh, yeah, I could do this all day, I think. I mean, I don't know if, I mean, if we keep getting bit every once in a while, I don't know. We'll see. We'll just keep going. <laughs> I think they're just running down these banks and like, and like maybe wolf packs of a couple fish or something because they're, they're definitely not singles through there because they're hitting it so hard.
Mm-hmm. Big move from John Cox right there. Move back from Shane LeHue. You can see right now he's up to 23 pounds even. Early on on this day, Greg Hackney. Some big moves coming up there. Very interesting, as Mark Zona pointed out, to see exactly how he's getting it done. We'll get to that as well. We live to see David Williams, Walters, Kennedy, Lochran, Austin, and Sumrall rounding out our top ten early on on day one. Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. It's showtime at the 1989 Bassmasters Classic in Richmond, Virginia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. We all know that the health of our sport lies in preserving clean rivers and streams. And thanks to your efforts, we will maintain this wonderful sport for future generations. In 1984, I attended the weigh-in at Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And I want to thank you for including me in this year's weigh-in. And now I feel like I'm standing in the Olympic Games of bass fishing. So thanks for letting me come. Thank you very much. We won't just stay here now. Remembering Ray Scott fondly this week of President Bush, Bush 41. Thought so much of Ray that he made That's him awesome. his Alabama state chairman uh, back in the awesome. day. That, that, is, that is something else. He had the big picture Ray did. President Bush saw that in him, and of course, we're all reaping the benefits of Ray's wide and sweeping vision of what, what the sport could be. Shane Lee Hugh on top now. Steve Kennedy, look at that big move up the leaderboard very quickly to almost 18 pounds. Greg Hackney, we saw him make that big move all well, about 15 minutes ago. John Cox, we just witnessed him with two, two really good ones uh, right up against the dam there. 16 pounds for him. Jason Christie, uh oh. Won the last event <laughs> and the classic. Which event well. has he not won? Tommy? Uh, yeah, that's, 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 that would be easier to track. I think. Lee Livesey also. Yeah, and one of the things you're starting to see in there is one of the things Livesey and Combs yeah, talked about. Guys it? that had experience here yeah. from a decade ago with low water conditions. You look at a Hackney, a Kennedy, a Christie. They were all part of that game a decade ago when we played here. And you just sort of feel like this lake is going to explode here in the next few hours looking at what the weights are so far. Tommy, you mentioned Ray Scott and coming out of that commercial break, just what he's done for the sport. We wouldn't have one without it, but we always think about Ray Scott being able to sell ice to an Eskimo. Like when, That's like the perfect definition of Ray Scott. But talking to all these legends uh, in the studio the other day, what he sold most was the love and passion for fishing. Like it yeah. wasn't it wasn't sponsorships that got the tournament started; those are key. But he sold the passion for fishing and conservation and enjoying the sport to the mass to that millions. Side of the dam and we're gone. And I think that far superseded any sale that he made monetary wise. Yes, sir. Ronnie, I have to give you. I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget down. this. I have to give you a Ray Scott story is he was so kind to let us come. And we used to have little goofy Calabamish cup and Flemish cup tournaments, you know, to almost two decades ago on his body of water, which was a, a magical body of water, you know, where he lived in Alabama. And, you know, he, I think he knew that I like to come and play hooky there. And it was like the second or third time I went there, Tommy, I know I told you this story. Yeah. He looked at me, he goes, let's take a drive together. So we're, we're driving around. We're not taping anything. We're goofing around. And he took me up on the highest point of, of the property that overlooked the lakes. And he said, take a look over the lake. And I said, okay. So I'm looking over the lake and he goes, I'd like to sell this lot to you, Mr. Zona. <laughs> I said, hey, Ray, I'm, I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's a good one. Memorable times. We had really, really, really fun times there. But Overstreet would come to those and good stuff. We talk about what 
talk about what Ray did a great job selling. He, he did a great job of selling these guys we're looking at here, these bass pros, to the public in general. I mean, he, the he drove the industry yeah. that way. I mean, he, yes. he really, really, he closed that. He closed that deal every day. He was relentless yeah. when it came to that, no doubt. How about a little B&W trailer hitches on the line, some bonus coverage. The man moving up that leaderboard very, very quickly. Steve Kennedy, let's get out to Steve right now. Steve, I, I hope you can hear us in the... We see Steve. Steve, can you tell us what's been going on? Give us the big picture, if you will. I, uh, in practice, I found a school of fish in the back of a creek on a little road bed. And, uh, anyway, it was not good when I got here. They weren't biting the same, but uh, I caught one or two on a swim bait messing around, and then I finally just set up on the road bed here. And, uh, Started using my active target and scout mode and picked up a jerk bait, Patrick Walter style, and caught a four, caught an almost six, a 514, I think. So, uh, and watching them eat it, which is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it's gotten a little slower again now. I can see them swimming everywhere, but they're tough to catch. Steve, you've got a lot of history here. This is one of those tournaments where it kind of seems like there's a little bit of everything going on, whether it's shallow, mid-depth, offshore. Have you committed to one of those, or are you kind of bouncing and keeping all three of those honest? Uh, right now, I've, I haven't left one spot. But uh, no, I'm planning to go throw a, a, a super spook around all day long. That's all I'm going to do. I watched that show from last year, and it was freaking awesome. So, uh, Anyway, if I get a big enough limit, I might go play around out there on some big trees trying to catch a really big one. But, but right now, so far, I'm stuck with one spot. I just, they're real finicky for some reason. Steve, did, did you get some big bites on a topwater in practice? I, uh, the biggest one I caught was probably six or seven. Uh, caught several fours. There was one little deal. I mean, I don't want to talk about it too much yet, but it was, I was able to go right behind guys and get bit. So, uh, and in lots of places, every place I stopped, I get bit just about. So, we'll, we'll see. They just, they weren't giants. They weren't those eight, nine. But, but I did catch some decent fish, so who knows? Steve, thank you so much. Great oh, start yeah. today. Steve Kennedy out there, currently running in third place place he doesn't want to leave right now for sure he uh, he happened on the right spot at the biggest bass of the day so far from uh, Gary Klaus an eight pound ten ounce well it's first fish <laughs> there it is. Oh, God, there's you. Gary Klaus you jumped your own Suit lead you. Yeah, he you, did yeah, exactly. he scooped his own scoop <laughs> yeah Exactly. Well, you hear Kennedy talking about throwing a big topwater bait shallow later today. Exactly what John Cox started, has been doing all morning long so far. That would be a Texas share lunker. They have that program with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Any fish over eight pounds is a share lunker. Uh, any fish over 10 pounds is a lunker <coughs> elite class. And then over 13 is the lunker legend class. Legacy. And that and those, yeah, and those go into uh, the, <laughs> oh, suit, I'm reading it off their website. So if you want to read it with me, you can. Um, but yeah, I was looking at it, and there have been 17 logged at Lake Fork this year, just, just from the first four months of the year. There have been 17 at least marked. We know that obviously some guys catch them and don't even take them in for the, you know, the lunker program. More than Legendary. half of the share lunkers in the history of the program came from here, from yes. Lake Fork, right? Yeah. And of the 17, I think 11 or 12 are from people out of state. That just, that just shows you the pressure that Lake Fork gets, not only from Texans, but people from across the country that come <laughs> fish here for a bucket list trip like we're seeing right there, Patrick Walters. OK, 
catching a bunch of small fish so far this morning. We need to really get one good bite before 9, 930. And well, we got enough wind and clouds. I think the top water bite and the shallow point bite will stay going for a little bit, but you got to take advantage of it when you can. First thing, get over that stump, perfect. It's a lot harder to fish around this stuff now that the water's low. Kind of got to bob and weave your bait through there. It's right where she should be, right in there. Square bill in there, we'll be good. We knew long before we came here it would be hot and heavy mm -hmm. on Lake Fork. The weather's been hot the last couple of days. We'll be for a couple more. And the fish are heavy, especially for Shane Lake U. Yeah, no doubt about it. Marathon peak performance. And really listening to Davey Height, seeing what Shane Lake U has right here with 23 pounds officially, actually, in this tournament is Davey Hyde talking about that is going to have to be one of the lower weights you weigh in this event to hold the trophy on Championship Sunday. Started to see big risers so far today. Shane LeCue, see a Greg Hackney steadily rising up the leaderboard. But so far this morning, day number one, Shane LeCue, Marathon Peak Performance. Good performances we have seen so far today. It's early on. It's early hours yet. There we go. And it's day one competition from John Cox. Lee Livesey. Like that. That's a big one. It's a great top water action. It's everything you want in your Bassmaster Live presentation. We've been lucky enough to uh, witness it so far. And the promise oh, is, the potential is, it could be getting about. better and better as the day goes on. <laughs> there we go. That's more number two. Adequate right reason to stick around a little two bit down. longer or a lot longer. The Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Lynn Coda. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. And by Rapala. When any new lake opens, it has an abundant amount of uh, cover and Matter of fact, when Lake Fork first opened up, most of these trees that you see are stumps right now were actual full trees that still had the vegetation on them, still had the leaves. And back then, we were fishing the lake. You'd go off into areas, and you wouldn't even see another boat. You'd hear other boats. So I watched it go from that to what it is today. It's uh, been through a lot of different processes and stuff, especially right now. The lake is uh, six foot low, and the reason it is low is because they had repairs to do on the dam. And so about uh, three months ago, they lowered the lake, and that's why it's low right now. It's the first time it's been this low in a long time. When the lake first opened, I mean, we caught tons of fish. They were, you know, average size small fish, but just, I mean, there was nothing to come out here back in the early 80s and catch 50, 60, 80 fish a day, but they were all, you know, average size fish. Up, upwards to maybe close to 300 fish, over 13 pounds have come out of this lake that's been taken to the Sure Lunker program. The fishing is good right now, but we're just not seeing a lot of the the big, big fish. Well, I like I have a lot of people call me all the time that are not just going to hire a guide, but they're they're going to come down and bring their own boat, and they'll they'll call me to ask, you know, where's a good place to put in, where's a good place to stay, what's a good area of the lake to fish. And the first thing I tell them, especially right now, is just to be careful where you navigate on this lake because it's dangerous right now. I mean, there's a lot of places that that you can think that it's wide open water and then you've got stumps this big around just barely under the water. Oh, yeah. And there's been a lot of people tear their boats up here in the last couple of months. And uh, it's just a lake you gotta be real careful on. If you don't know it, you know, they've got these, they've got chips to, to navigate the lake and stuff like that. So if you're coming here, I recommend a lot of them get that. Advance and Wood County setting up that uh opportunity to get some good info on the less than 50 year history of this amazing lake. Exactly, Tommy and David Vance, an absolute legend. Not only a legend on Lake Fork, but a legend of the state of Texas. Used to fish a lot of the Bassmaster tournaments. Actually, Ronnie, this was long before you were on Earth. 
Oh. David Vance, once on the Bassmaster television show, long before Bassmaster Live, I remember a tournament he was throwing a Carolina rig lizard. You know what I mean? I'm talking old school, Ronnie Moore. Carolina rig lizard on Rayburn having a big event, old school event. It's in the late 80s, back out to Bassmaster Live. Lee Livesey hooked up. Ronnie, I believe the color of that lizard was a cotton ca cotton candy chartreuse tail. Nice. Wow. Yes, exactly. Good. Damn. Shut up. Good lord, look where that crankbait's at. Yes. Look at that. Six cents, three hundred DD down the gullet. <laughs> Woo. First cast. Thanks for leaving, Drew. Try to get her off without hurting her. Let's take a look at how Orville does on this one. Bringing it today. Good. <laughs> she ate it. <laughs> Baby, I'm gonna dip her real quick, Jake. 514. Mm. I think everybody's tightened up in that boat right now. Yeah, the wheels are definitely on the bus. The BMC on point kind of had that vibe talking to Lee Livesey yesterday, qualifying for the classic through the opens that he was gonna gamble a lot more than usual. BMC on point really so far today has been he said, I'm not gonna have to play it safe which is a dangerous proposition for the Lake Fork guide, Lee Livesey, saying really, if he was fighting for the classic, you'll find this interesting, Ronnie. He'd get out on one of those ledges and kind of just shoot par, maybe 20 to 21 pounds, get his points. So far today, Lee Livesey gambling in a big way, six cents crankbait. BMC on point today. I believe that one right there was on a hair jig about 45 minutes ago and we are not seeing big numbers in Lee Livesey's boat but the quality starting to go up BMC on point Lee Livesey on Lake Fork yet again well Lee you mentioned his fighting for the classic he doesn't have to fight for the classic he won three weeks ago uh, St. Croix open on oh, Ross Barnett oh, otherwise it's not been a super stellar season points wise for Lee Livesey yeah, we need it off the stick. God almighty. Uh -huh. Stay on. Big fish. That's a big one. Bait came out of her mouth. You saw that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he is wound up. <laughs> Six cents, 300 DD. Mm. Zero. About a four pounder. <laughs> Seven twelve. Sure. Give me a weight, Orville. Yep. 
712. 712, baby. That's a tank. 712. Mm. Mm. Lake Fork, baby. You good? Mm. Well, that minnow bucket's going to be firing on all Oof. cylinders today, That's Ron Moore. I got five bucks. Yeah, I'm feeling like a real big idiot for not <laughs> putting him on the fantasy team with 70% ownership, though. Right. I feel like I outsmarted <laughs> right. myself there. You yeah. Know? He's up to 28-11. 28 pounds right 11 Right there ounces. for Lee Livesey. You're going to like this, Ron. Got to nope. talk to one of his sponsors, Whiskey Myers lead singer Cody Cannon. I said, hey, what will it take to win? I was just curious. He said 112 pounds Lee Livesey. Even gave the winner <laughs> right. of this tournament. Were you asking about last year? Because that's exactly what it was last year. Is that what it was, 112? Uh -huh. yeah. 12 12-5. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say more this year. Yeah. He is. Look at that face. He's going to punch somebody right in the mouth. <laughs> On a roll, that's for sure. Careful, Almost 30 horrible. pounds, yeah. Just saw three of them in there when I was in practice. How about this, Z? Greg De Palma in the last 15 minutes, 23 more, pounds, five ounces, four, third we'll place. Just go well, the one thing you heard the last like 10 pounder today. Three or four events that mm -hmm. it happens fast and can happen in five casts okay. here. <laughs> That's fine with me, trust me. see out there of course you know well known he knows this play he spent more hours here more time on the water than anyone else in the field and that advantage is certainly shining right now no doubt ron didn't didn't greg de palma have a good first day here last year and then a miserable second is that, is... i think i think he was on camera uh day two and had a bad day three i think that's what it was but yeah he was he did okay. do well in the back of a Back of a little yes, deal, yes. I think near a bridge or something. He was in Big Caney. Yeah, remember that. Lee Livesey's 28-11 on Bash Track right now is bigger than any day he had last year at Lake Fork, except for that 42-pound really? day on the final day. Wow. Ugh. Really? And we talk about it. What's weird is Brandon Cobb had 114 pounds in his win. Lee Livesey had 112. Patrick Walters in the fall had 102, the lowest winning weight of the three events we've had. Obviously the toughest time of the year to do it. But Walters was more consistent, never having a bag over 29 and a half, never having a bag under 22 and a half. Everything was in the 20s. Meanwhile, Cobb and Livesey had the ability to reach to 42 for Livesey and 37.15 for Cobb. But they both had days mixed in where there was 14 pounds or 17 pounds. They both had an under 20 pound day and that was day two of their victory. So. Not sure. Normally, Saturdays are the tough days on the Tennessee River. Maybe at Lake Fork, the tough days are the Fridays. Um, I don't know if people call out a sick for work or something, but uh, it seems that both day twos for our, two of our winners have been their worst days. So we'll keep an eye on that. How about a little B&W trailer hitches on the line? 
Let's return to our man on site. That is going to be Davey Height. And Davey, there he is, Davey, right there. And Davey, you spend a lot of your time on a lake where we handed out a couple of century uh, belts earlier this season right now. What's the general mindset of these anglers when they come into a place where you know, what kind of pressure does that add to you where you know you've got to, you've got to just rail on them every day, put up big results every day? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing, Tommy. I mean, we last bit, Santee Cooper, you know, you, you've got to have big weights to win there, but, but even more so here on Lake Fork, it's, it's, it's incredible seeing these anglers in the morning before takeoff and, and talking to them, knowing that they have to go and fish for five to ten pounders. Two pounders do you no good here. Three pounders, not very good here at all. They have to fish for those five to ten pounders. Absolutely incredible. And you see, uh, we've had a great start this morning. You're seeing people, Greg De Palma, you know, with a, just real quick catching 23 pounds. That's the way this lake sets up this time of the year. You can have an angler that has literally almost nothing, and then at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock this afternoon, catch 20-plus pounds. Absolutely incredible. It's a great fishery. And you can see in the background with the water level low, one of the things that makes this lake so great, obviously to share a lunker program and what Texas Parks and Wildlife does, but all the cover here for these fish and, and these fish having so many places to hide, so to speak. Davey, real quick, you, you were, well, we covered you for a long time and you and I have been in the boat together a long time. You loved heavyweight tournaments. You love those tournaments where the potential was there for a hundred pounds. But I want to talk about the adverse side of that. You know, if you get, we have a lot of first time anglers here to Lake Fork in the Bassmaster Elite Series. I want you to talk about what it's like in a tournament like this after day one. If you say you're 30 pounds behind and you're 20 pounds out of the cut, what do you even do mentally? Like, what do you do going into day two or three? Well, you say a lot of prayers going into day two if you don't catch very many on a place like this. But you're exactly right, Z. I, I live for tournaments like this. Most of these anglers do on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Big bass, big stage, big dreams. These are the tournaments you live for. But unfortunately, there will be some people, in my opinion, exactly like what you're saying. We're going to see... 100 plus pound stringers, I, I definitely think it's going to take you know more than 100 pounds to win. But there'll be some anglers that don't catch them very well. And, and a lot of the reason for that, for the people that are watching and say, wow, how can you not catch 10 pounds or how can you not catch 15 pounds when somebody's catching 30 or maybe 40 pounds? You're fishing for those big fish. And when you're fishing for those five plus pound fish, you know, it, it, you can just, you know, get in a bad rotation fishing offshore stuff, you know, lose some fish in this timber. There will be some people that don't bring very many fish, you know, to the scales. They're marshal on the boat day, weigh them because they're fishing for those big fish. So don't let it be deceiving that, that these anglers couldn't go catch two and three pounders. They know they have to catch five plus pounders to do any good here at all this week. Davey, talking about some of those tournaments, you fished in them. Tommy and I, we ca we called those tournaments. You can look at a. Amistad, uh, a Clear Lake, a Santee Cooper. A lot of times when we go to Okeechobee, that you would watch guys come across the stage with Mercer or, or the old MC here, Keith Allen, that would catch 15 to 20 pounds. And it was absolutely demoralizing. It was breaking of a man to watch them come across the stage with seven, where some of those young guys at the time thought, man, I, I had a good day. I'm doing okay. And then they're just absolutely shell-shocked. This is going to be one of those tournaments. Yeah, absolutely, Z. And it, it, I, I've been there and done that, so I know how it feels. I've been on the on the plus side sometimes, but on the, on the minus side sometimes also. And it is uh, it, it's tough. It's tough to go back to your room that night and, and regroup for the next day. But but it's it's that way each and every tournament. It's just these tournaments that, that the bigger weights. It just it's just so frustrating when you know the potential here on Lake Fork, 
and, and it just doesn't happen. I, I talked to a few anglers this morning that just did not have good practices or, or had a good practice. You know, the first day, there was a lot more fish shallow. Each and every day, it seems to be more fish moving offshore. There were some guys that, that really got off to a good start in practice the first day, and it's just gone away, and they haven't been able to find those groups of fish offshore. But but it'll be it'll be interesting. I really think it is the month of May, and a lot of these fish are offshore, but someone like a John Cox I was watching just a few minutes ago, there'll be some guys that do really well shallow, but I just, I'm just concerned if, if those bigger fish can be caught shallow. Uh, we, we'll have to see how that unfolds, but, but Z, to your point, uh, you know, it's fishing. It's tough. You're fishing against the best anglers in the world, and, and you've got to catch those bigger fish everywhere you go. And, and it's just a lot of pressure out here, but that's what makes these guys great. They have to perform each and every day. Davey, thank you so much. Great insights on the water from Dave. Uh, Davey Height and Dave Mercer and Davey will be uh, running the show, be driving the bus here a little bit later on. We definitely look forward to that on-site coverage from uh, one of the iconic places in the sport of fishing, and one of the uh, icons of this place. Whoa. Oh, look, what, what happened there? We got a big bass coming across the board of Skeeter Boats. Big fish alert. Yeah. Take your time now. Yeah. There's so many, I don't know which one they're we got, like, we got here. We got Brian New with a 614. All right, that's what it is. I don't Maybe, see it's this one. Maybe it's this one to keep coming. I'm just going to flip him. There we go. That's a chunk or two. Oh, he's mean. Oh, that's the finest feeling. He's not a big one, but man, look at the dang fish. He's awesome. The mean size. He is. I'm gonna unclamp it. I guess I'm gonna unclamp it. What do you think? We're Ready? Zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're zero. All right. Sometimes you can I'm touch gonna... the tail just barely. They'll okay. settle for a second, and you can pick him up. Dude. Settle. Calm yourself. Let's start talking to <laughs> Calm yourself on down. Four nine. Four a lot. nine. Yep. All right. Okay, I'm nine eight ounces. Can I fire one while you're fighting down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ready to get it back out there. In Keith Combs. He knows how, how fast it can happen out here. He's done it so many times. Keith Combs, though, still outside of our top 10 at point right now. Josh Douglas is our 10th place guy. John Cox. Chris Johnston moving up on that leaderboard. And Ronnie Moore with the fist pump there. It must be a connection. We'll find out about that a little bit later. But Lee Livesey, the man on top, scaring 30 pounds early on today. After a return from Iraq, I was re really reluctant to, to talk to people. I remember telling him, you need to get the help that you've earned. Go seek treatment. It's always good to be with other veterans. Veterans that have gone through the struggles, that have been through the storm. That was just what I needed. There's so many more things left for us to do. Connect with someone at the VA. You really don't have anything to lose by checking into it and seeing what they can do for you. This Mental Health Month, hear inspiring stories at maketheconnection.net slash MHM. Well, you know, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is observing this month, Mental Health Month. There's a public awareness campaign they got going. It's called Veterans Know. It's veterans from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of different situations and identity. And the, the message that they're putting out is that there is a, a better, a healthier life possible. So they, they sort of emphasize the shared military experience that connects all these veterans. And this campaign helps them over, overcome stigmas and, and everything else and, and shows them a pathway that there is hope for all these common mental health issues. You want, you want to go to maketheconnection.com that you see right there on your screen and check that out definitely, especially this very important month, but this is an effort that goes on month in and month out, all year long. Recognizing those veterans here do so much, big part of uh, the sport of bass fishing for a long 100%, 100%. time. Absolutely, and will be for many, many years to come. Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork, and we're on day number one, and man, 
we have seen enough big fish to, well, sustain, more than sustain us so far. And of course, the, uh, it's been mentioned before that maybe the big action is yet to come. Lee Livesey himself said, I don't really get cranking until after the midway part of the day. I don't, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm certainly going to be around to, to watch it. I hope you're planning on doing that as well. Ian McHugh, Greg DePalma. Tommy, if he, if he gets cranked up, the only thing Lee Livesey has left to do is break the all-time record for a single-day bag. So we can just wait and see if, see if he can do that. We'll take a look at what he's done so far today. Or four-day total. In Ronnie. all honesty, in all honesty, Ronnie, that is exactly your Mercury move of the day. Lee Livesey saying, yeah, it's a little bit tougher, but I do think that that record will be broken this week. Taking a look at the Mercury move of the day, a lot of his damage has been done on a six cents crankbait so far. Lee Livesey, we talked about it right at the start of Bassmaster Live today, making the comment, his bigger ones bite later in the day. So far today, Lee Livesey has been absolutely flawless. And one thing to watch with Lee Livesey, that's definitely noticeable fishing very, very small one cast spots. He's made the comment to his cameraman, Jake Latondras, several times, I missed the right cast. Knowing these single cast areas where these fish are kind of funneling from and to, your Mercury move of the day, it almost looks like a rewind of the final day of this tournament from last year. Lee Livesey doing damage already here on Lake Fork. And if he's got a lot of room to grow today could be, this week could be one of those special, special events we have here on Lake Fork. Mercury move the day, Lee Livesey. Yes! Yes! Crankbait came out of her mouth. You saw that? 28 pounds, 11 ounces right now for Lee Livesey. That's a lead. Four pounds and 13 ounces ahead of Shane Lee Yu, who's having a fantastic day. Speaking of which, this man, our leader in Progressive Angler of the Year points. Not too shabby today either. Some great catches on top. One. Gosh, he didn't hit it that hard. Ah, come on. Well, almost in the same spot. Oh. Come here, I don't want to get those hooks in my hand. Yeah, not a giant, but we'll take them. At least they're still hitting that thing. Is Jim Sexton his marshal in the boat? I, I, you know was what? that who I just saw? Three I don't nine. know. I don't Three know. Nine. Sure. Thought it was. No, I yeah, have we're still getting a little top water action. Look how fat that guy is. That's what we call mixed breed Z of Sexton and Bones. I was just getting ready to lay it down. I wasn't sure what I was going to throw, but I was going to lay it down. Thanks. Thanks. John Cox started early the first hour with a five plus 747. Yeah, and Tommy, you could kind of tell that some of our anglers definitely got to see some of the footage from last year with Lee Livesey. You heard Steve Kennedy make the comment he is going to commit to a top water later today. You know you are on a good lake when you could pretty much just lock a top water in your hand oh, and yeah, first not 90 minutes, do over 20 pounds of bass. Solid day so far for John Cox, <laughs> your angler of the year leader. Absolutely. Two, five plus. Well, actually, oh one, God. five, ten in the boat uh, caught about 8 17 a.m. for John Cox so a fabulous day so far plenty of room left to go yeah,
wanted to bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon Tommy, and, and talk a little bit about Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and Mercury Drain the Lake. We've been off for about six weeks, and so people have been mulling their picks over, and I think I was one of those guys that maybe overthought my picks just a little too much early on day one. I'm already having a little bit of regrets, but I'm going to go through my team anyway, Z, and my Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing picks. Brandon Lester, Chris Johnson, he's doing well in the top ten right now. Jeff Gustafson, a great history here as well. Austin Felix, a great offshore angler. And Keith Combs, obviously his record here at Lake Fork speaks for itself. I think overall the team looks pretty safe, but the, what I'm going to get into a little bit later is about that bucket D pick, Lee Livesey, leaving him out of there. But looking at Drain the Lake as well, you got to use your anglers before you lose them. And so I picked Lee Livesey and Keith Combs for this event because this is the only event I wanted them for this whole season. Once you pick them for Mercury Drain the Lake, you can't use them again. Use Lee Livesey's uh, roommate Caleb Sumrall, Stetson Blaylock, we mentioned, has guided here in the past, done a lot of electronics courses as well here. Masayuki Matsushita, a great offshore power fishing angler. Scott Canterbury and uh, John Cruz, we mentioned John Cruz had the experience here, but this is where I went wrong because we can kind of get into the chalk squad. The teams, if you wanted to pick the highest percentage angler in each bucket, you kind of have a really good team with Patrick Walters, Chris Zaldane, Brock Mosley, Leo Livesey, and Keith Combs, and that's what scared me off. In bucket D, 69 to 70% of the player base picked Lee Livesey. It was such a, blaring, a glaringly uh, obvious pick that I did not do it because I'm trying to gain an edge by maybe picking someone different and beating 70% of the field. But early on day one, Z, I'm not looking uh, forward to seeing the leaderboard at the end of this event with Lee Livesey already on top. Um, but yeah, that's my. those are my fantasy picks. So, so who did you pick I picked Austin in place Felix. of Lee? Austin Felix. I thought that Austin Felix. In, pick, in, in place of Lee Livesey. In place of Lee Livesey because of – uh, he had been spending the time in Texas the last week or so getting familiarized with other lakes and kind of what the fish are doing. Also, he is a great offshore angler and electron. I figured it's he would do that. But it's extremely hard gamble. to call yourself the king of fantasy <laughs> with that decision got, right well, there. Well, see, the thing is, is if I, I told Tommy this, if I was at 95%, I could protect the lead. But I'm not. I'm at 85%. So to get back up to that, you got to take some risks and gambles, and sometimes you miss when you shoot at, at the target. So got our hummingbird on view there. <laughs> Patrick Walters. Now, now, now for everybody, everybody's got him on their their drain the lake team. Yeah, right? exactly. Unless, unless you said, oh, he's defending at Chickamauga, and you I'm pick gonna, him there, and you pick yeah. him, and you couldn't and use him exactly. here. Exactly, that's Already another big mistake. Him. Just like Patrick Walters, you either and use it at Stan, Santee Cooper, his. Uh, home lake or you use him here because he's won and gotten second there's a couple different strategies but, yeah. and see you were high on austin yeah. felix early this season after sixth place at the uh, st john's and he has not done well no. since no he was my pick to give a angler of the year yeah. well see z Which, thinking about felix got some good offshore results he did great at Rodman, which actually kind of looks like lake fork to be honest just the way the timber fishes and stuff but that was why I, I'm still trying to justify it, but it doesn't sound right. You know, you know. Ronnie, he's only 28 pounds, 11 ounces back of Lee Livesey exactly. right now. Exactly. Hummingbird, bird's eye view of a good inside of a stump right there. <laughs> <laughs> totally from a That's a cord out stump. Scott Canterbury in practice posted a photo of one of those trees that's hollowed out, and it had a huge bird's nest in it with, I mean, dozens of eggs big eggs not like little wow. bluebird eggs like they were big eggs yeah, now. Osprey I don't know eggs or pterodactyl i'm not sure oh, maybe be, you know could be texas got them there grebe nest yeah i agree that's Possible. exactly what i've never Possibly. seen a grebe egg though we heard david bands talking earlier about how they lift all these trees with the vegetation i mean with the the green branches still on them when this place got started you could get lost back in there that's the trick at Fork Navigating. Back to Keith Combs. It's all right, because the one ounce jig will throw down on a big one, too. Very big, I don't think. Yeah, he's pretty good. Got to be out of your way 
Um, I think we're good. Nice. Yeah. Nice one. Kind of lean. One ounce structure jig. Grilled him. He enjoyed it. I did too. Let me uh, hit my little spotlight button. Well, he clocked it too. He's skinny, but we think. Ready? We are zeroed. Yes, I am ready. <sighs> Five zero. Okay. Five zero. Five zero. Yeah, okay. Just long and lean. <laughs> oh, the, the only guy mad zero. at a five zero. <laughs> All the folks watching Lee Livesey and what he's done here the last few years, don't count this guy out, Keith Combs, who has gained a lot of momentum in the region here the last few weeks and some tournaments been going on. Keith Combs uh, had a big, big day two and three of practice and like Livesey said, really anything before about 10 or 11 o'clock is pure bonus for Keith Combs so far. Is Keith number two on your chalk squad, Ronnie? <laughs> yeah, he was. 45%, but I went with him because Bucket E, I mean, honestly, couldn't have been better for fans who wanted to pick the favorites oh, because yeah. they were all spread out. Yeah. Lee Livesey and Combs both having pretty hard years so far early in the year. Being pretty... Juvenile. Still don't need measured or zeroed. We're good. Two fifteen. Roger that. Two Cute. pounds, fifteen ounces. Cute little feller. <laughs> Adorable. Starting to have a little fun now. It's Keith Combs. That's that's a good sign. Maybe not the best time for everyone else in the field, but uh, long way to go before we make the final determination. On that Striker Daily Trivia, we're remembering, we're celebrating the life of Ray Scott today at what Cracknell, Alabama Lake? Did young Ray Scott catch his first bass? Was it Bridge Creek Lake? Was it Graham Haven Lake? Was it Camp Tukabachi <laughs> Lake? Or was it Paraviginous Lake? Oh, of course, the famous Paraviginous Lake. That's, that's uh, number D right there. So, uh, Chew on that for a little bit. Think about all those days back in uh, South Alabama. Ray Scott was growing up. Where did he catch his first bass? That's going to constitute our first of many Ray Scott-related Striker Daily Trivia questions for today. Be right back. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. Gentlemen, start your engines. The great American dream of making bass fishing a profession started here when Montgomery, Alabama insurance executive Ray Scott dropped the scart flag at Beaver Lake and contestants roared off in aluminum boats and 10 horsepower engines. That first BASS tournament changed America's leisure time hours, propelling the sport of fishing into America's third largest participant sport and the organization that has brought national awareness to catch and release for the preservation of the resource. Celebrating, remembering Ray Scott today. So much he did for the sport. He was just Mr. Everything and continues to be his legacy. Today, Striker Daily Tribute, a Ray Scott related question. Here it is again. At what Crabble, Alabama lake did young Ray Scott catch his first bass? Was it A, Bridge Creek Lake, B, Graham Haven Lake, C, Camp Tukabachi Lake, or D, Paraviginous Lake? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm, I'm going I'm to let you go first, Z. They're all Pratt New Area yeah. Lakes. Okay. Tommy, I'm going to go to Kabachi Lake. Camp to Kabachi. Okay, run. What do you think? I'll go Graham Haven. I'm going to go just a normal sound. <laughs> like, how about Bridge Creek Lake? 
for that first fish. There first you go, bass. Tommy. Oh, there we wow. go. Wow. Simple, simple wow. wins the game. So there we go. The Simpleton wins the game. So uh, Bridge Creek Lake, first time uh, Young Race. You said you said he, is, yep. they got it mounted suits, right? Is yeah, that, the family was invited. Young uh, Race Scott caught a little seven-incher, and they went and got it mounted. And it's supposedly in the Prattville Bass Pro Shops. All right. Beautiful. This lake later, you know. Ray Scott designed it for Big Bass Fishery, one oh. of his company. So there's a fishing club still there at Bridge Creek. Now, Tukabachi is a big band camp lake. Ah. Such. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Typical. If it's a good looking tree, it's got a fishing line on it. Trying to get a reaction strike real quick. Oh, I can, it's coming up. Oh, there it is. Got it back. Whew. Thank goodness. Um, we're going to start running these shallow points still, but we're going to back off of a little bit. We're looking for groups of them. Kind of looking for some fish that are starting to pull out. Um, we're just going to keep running, cover water, till we get an idea of First what thing to of the do. Bite. You know, uh, these fish are actually starting to move out deeper in the morning early, and that's what it's. That's how you're going to catch them out deep. That's how. That's what's going to end you through the rest of the week. But the shallow points are how you get lucky catch a couple early. The shad spawn deal's kind of, it's been wrapping up. It hasn't been that good. They're still up there, but the shad haven't been spawning. They're probably just spawning at night. And we are just gonna nickel and dime them till we can catch what we can catch. Fish this point for a minute. See if they're up here, run back out, hit some main lake points. And they're gonna be on those main lake points somewhere, the shallow, the long tapering points. They're gonna be either up shallow, then the timber in that six to 12 foot, or they're gonna be on the end of it in the point. So that's what we gotta go figure out is just go to the good stuff and start figuring them out. That's all we're gonna do. Walters had the big bass on days one and four last year, an 814 and a 9.5 on, on day four. Wow. 2020 he had a 9.1 on day three. Caught 105 pounds. 2020 at that point, I think it was by miles the largest margin of victory. 29 pounds, 10 ounces. More than double. Got a TH Marine weather watch right now. We got uh, Warm conditions, although not as warm as was predicted for today. Only 78 currently. Mostly sunny. Same thing for tomorrow, I think, Z. Yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be as hot as a bathhouse here tomorrow. Also oh, 92 degrees as we get into Saturday. Very similar warm conditions. And then the front's gonna kind of set in. Taking a look at tomorrow, 92, low of 75. TH Marine Weather Watch. And it is going to be a lot cooler on Sunday, yep. Tommy Sanders. Yep, that's the, that's the prediction. It's going to be warmer today, too. It may be 78 now, but that's uh, some of that cloud cover is going to recede. And it's going to get up in the 90s today. Back out to Lee Livesey. Come on. There he is. Ah, he ain't going to help me. That's the problem. I'm about to start catching these four and five pounders that ain't helping me. I don't know. We're gonna weigh them anyways. Oops, no, sorry. Zero. Four, four, he's gonna be a four. Zero. Four, two. Four, two didn't help. Well, I can tell you since that first bass, Orville has tightened up and he is bringing it now. Oh, he's killing it. Killing it all. That morning. boat is working. His boat one is day. working as one unit. Yep. Oh, I can't make the right cast. Oh, 
There we go. Get ready. I think they literally went and got in those trees. Can't tell if that's them or stumps in there. We're about to find out. Jamie Hartman with a 6.5 up to 18 pounds, 14 ounces, knocked uh, Brian New out of our top 10. He jumped in eighth place. Shane LaHue just caught a four and a half to cull up to uh, 24 pounds, seven ounces. No way that one bit it and that's it. Ah, they're still in there, I see them now. I think they're just swimming around a little bit. <clears throat> so Tommy, obviously we're gonna have 30 stringers over 20 pounds today, I would guess. Is that your number? I, I'll put it at 28. But here's a question. Here's a question. I, I've been throwing it to some Bassmaster Live viewers. How many over 30 today? Ooh. I'm saying four or five? Dang. Well, it's early. Yeah. They say their bites are afternoon. And you get some of the bigger fish? I say three, but I say we have like. 15 or so this week, at least. Okay. Over 30. How many 30s today, Z? I'm gonna go four. Four. Wow. Price is right at us. That'll be good. That'll be good. We'll know. I mean, they're catching, weighing, and releasing right now, and so far, Caught, weighed, and released by Lee Livesey stands at 28 pounds and 11 ounces. And again, if you missed this earlier, he proclaimed the second half of the day is going to be the money half of the day there. So you definitely want to stick around for that. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. All right, guys, John Cox here, and we're at the Bassmaster Elite on Lake Fork, presented by Sims. Man, I am so excited to get here this week. This is like that one time of year where you get to go to like, pretty much like a stocked pond. You know, you go to a place where uh, it's better than any of the places we go to. Uh, any cast could be a 10 pounder. Um, the conditions this time are a lot warmer uh, than last time. Uh, I think we're gonna see a lot of guys catching them deep. We're gonna see a lot of forward facing sonar and jerk bait action. Uh, me, I've caught three fish in my life on a jerk bait and I don't have forward facing sonar. So uh, I'm not gonna be doing any of that. I'm gonna try to stay shallow. Um, it's, I seem to be able to get some bites first thing in the morning uh, and then right towards the end of the day, which is very scary because you know we're only gonna have that morning window. But uh, you know, we tried out deep. I don't like it. But uh, the one bait I'm gonna mostly throw is uh, I'm gonna try to go down the bank with the Berkeley swim jig. Um, it, we have a new power bait uh, cooked into the skirt. So this thing, man, when they grab it, they really hang on to it. And uh, I'm gonna use the power bait meaty chunk and 
um, you know, pretty much kind of mimic a shad, maybe bluegill. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go with the white just because, you know, the, that like shad spawn time of year. I don't know, I really don't know what's going on, but I'm hoping that there's gonna be some kind of change. Uh, and we have caught some big fish, uh, you know, in practice. So maybe we'll catch one of those 10, 11 pounders this week. Um, you know, so far, uh, so far it's going okay. I mean, we got that top water bite going this morning, and we got two nice ones. You know, two five pounders. I mean, that's the main goal. At the end of the day, we want to get have like you know five over five. So uh, we got two down, three more to go. Uh, this bite here is just kind of quit. Um, but so we're gonna start moving. I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna pick up a jig the rest of the day and. Uh, go down the bank and sling it around and, and see if we can't catch a big one and uh, might even pull the frog out a little bit here in a minute. So uh, I think we're just going to get, you know, those are kind of like bonus. I wasn't sure if we were going to catch them here or not. It's It seems like, uh, you know, these are a lot of like deep fish that just come up and they, they just feed in the mornings and then and then I guess they go out to the ledges where everybody's fixing to start crushing them if they haven't already. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're going to finish up here and uh, just keep on moving, you know, try to run some spots. It's, it's blowing pretty much right down uh, the, the arm we want to fish today, but uh, we might be able to get out of the wind a little bit. He bass on a jerk bait in his entire lifetime. Say that again, Z. I, I think he said he has caught three bass on a jerk bait in his entire <laughs> lifetime. Exactly. <laughs> and no front facing sonar. I mean, you have to kind of love that whole segment right there. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome to see that a guy stays that simple, knowing the rest of the field has that stuff and that technology and to just does his own thing and does not overthink it. And he's the points leader at this point halfway yes. through the season. That's very telling, very yeah. telling. Yeah, yeah. And you can definitely get away with that style of fishing in Florida for two events, Santee Cooper and Lake Chickamauga, all before the month of April finished out. But that then his next test, if he can survive this week and, and not have to fish offshore, Pickwick, he could probably still fish shallow as well, but then you get to the Lake Oahis and stuff. That'll be the one. That'll be the one event I'm interested to see how he approaches it, because um, there are no largemouth. He does catch some smallmouth fishing at St. Lawrence, but mm -hmm. he's been there multiple times. Never been to Oahi. It'll be interesting. Thought I'm good at St. Clair as well. Yep. Back Up in the Clay. river, yeah. Chris Johnson with six pounders up to 25 pounds, second place. Jamie Hartman, our eighth angler, over 20 pounds today. Eighth place. 20 more to go for Mark Zona to be right. There we go. Oh, I'll try, Ron. I swear to you, I'm going to give it my best today. And our Mercury Dare to Compare is actually going to be, Ronnie, I'm going to let you take this because you talked about Lee Livesey last year, Mercury Dare to Compare, Ron Moore. Yeah, Lee Livesey's 25-6 was actually his third biggest bag of the week last year. And you can see those fish count totals. If he got rid of that 215 on day one, he would probably be up to around where he's at this week, 2811 on day one so far. What's interesting about fish number four and five uh, for both of those were basically two of his biggest fish, but last year they were his last two fish of the day, came late in the day. So if he already has these five fish and he's able to get two late day big ones as well this week, most definitely we'll get over 30 pounds and we'll be able to see him call. Um, that 4-2 out, that is his smallest. That's a good one to be your smallest, Tommy. Yeah, yeah I think it's no argument there. What a day. It's far from being done on this day. Mercury dare to compare. Exactly. Thank you. In the bird bird's eye view of uh, Lee and his situation there. There's a little bit article from Shea Baker who was out fishing with him uh, talking about how that that boat is like a billboard going across the lake the right attracting boats everywhere it went which uh, I understand that he tried to turn it into him so they couldn't see uh, his signage on the side of his boat when boats would pass it's him freaking big and two
gotcha. All right, girl. Yes. <laughs> Six cents, 300 DD, gone. Caught her out of the tree. Hummingbird Mega 360. You see me staring at it. The 360 is huge. Five seven will give him thirty oh, pounds each. Fish. Nice. Ready, Orville? Nineteen pounder. Six seven. Six seven. Got rid of that four, baby. Beautiful long, long fish. I don't even know where Dalton's at. I don't think she's. I know she's not twenty four, but I'm gonna put her on there just to. She's a twenty three inch fish. 22 and three quarter. Beautiful eight fork fish. Would you say five seven? That would give him 30. So six seven gives him 31 even. All right, that was a six seven. So that gives us two pounds, 30 pounds, 10 ounces, or 11 ounces. I'm not doing my math right. I know that. But. And 31. Yeah, well, Orville's going to least. be the judge of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep him in line, Orville. Be very, very interesting to see how Lee Livesey manages the rest of his day. So the 5 0 and a 5 14. A 5 and a 6, pretty much, are my small two. I need two 7 pluses. That'll give me three pounds. That'll give me 34. Then I'll just go fish community hole stuff that try to catch a 10 pounder off of. I need to run back to that ridge where I cranked by Cobb before I go that way, see if those fish are biting. I was so close to being hung up in that tree when that fish ate it. Like I was stuck on it and I popped it off and she went don't I cannot believe they won't eat this jig if you're new to Bassmaster Live we don't get a lot of guys with 30 pounds in the first three hours of fishing in yeah. general no, no not at all it's kind of unusual like we've mentioned there's we things that you'll see No go, Orville. Six cents hybrid jig, net bait pocket curl. Hummingbird bird's eye view of that last catch there. Watch this. Yeah, taking a look at that hummingbird bird's eye view, and you really kind of listen and watch Lee Livesey today. It has been really bait selections been number one, but these are crazy, crazy small one cast areas. And if you really watch what we've covered with Lee, you know, from the first time that we covered him here on Fork, he just knows baits on this lake. We've covered him with giant swim baits, giant top water baits, a lot of cranking today. We've covered him with square bills in the past. But these little, you see him make the comment right there, shh, these little one cast areas, it'll be cool to see how he manages them the rest of today, I, uh, already with over 30 pounds. On that ridge outside there by Brandon Cobb, see if anybody's on it, go to cranking it. That's a spot I can catch a 10 pounder.
They're usually not worried about those trees like they are right now. Probably because it's a little earlier. They'll get away from those trees here in a little bit and catch them easier. Tommy and Z, normally in Such, normally when we look at someone's bass track and we see two fish the same weight at the Something same right. minute input it, it's a duplication and a double. You know, it's, it's, it's messed up. Double punch, yeah. For Shane LeHue, third place right now with 24 7 for his five fish limit. His last Tommy two fish are four and a half, caught at the same time because they were caught at the same time. A double, two four and a half pounders. Marshall Rick Moore entered those incorrectly. What an, what an wow. amazing double. Yeah. Every year we come here, Tommy, we see a double. We mm -hmm. saw Keith Combs do it on live. We yeah. saw Fighter yes. last year. Yep. We didn't see LeHue on live, obviously, Somebody's today. Got a big but giant bag right now. I'm on a spot in Locaine. Very special Two place. Them, Boy, and Seth Fighter, he was pretty honest with us. It looks like yesterday he said, my practice was really bad. It was backwards, and I am very concerned about this tournament. Seth Fighter with a miserable day one morning so far. Fighter's a guy who, the previous three events here, I think he's been in the top 12 all three tournaments. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's a sparkling record here. Absolutely. It's such a surprise to see him struggle so much on this day. But we're not even to the halfway point in this day's fishing. So uh, we've seen how quickly it can happen and how fast it happened. We Livesey is just it really spread. He's the only guy who's really spread his catches out uh, about equally throughout the course of the morning. But boy, he has been effective. 30 pounds in the first three hours of fishing. Just think about that for a little while. Mm. Love having you with us today. 30 pounds. <laughs> 30, 30 pounds on the first morning of Bassmaster Live, Tommy, sets up for a, as you would say, a sparkling, dazzling weekend. <laughs> sparkling thoughts that all you can think when you see something like that. Chris Johnston, the big mover in the last 25 minutes. Shane LeHue, Greg De Palma, Kennedy, Hackney, Christie, Hartman, John Cox hanging in there, and David Fritz and cranking going on right there. You can bet. We'll be back. Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha. Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Boy, well, we better be careful. Can I remember that kid's name? I think that's the one that's been doing really good this year. That Jay Perez. That yeah. If I lose them scissors. dang scissors one more time, I'm going to fight you, Horville. I'm going to have to tie them to my waist. I'll put them right there, they're going to bounce out. Good God almighty, I think they're all right here. I think I'm fishing for the school. The school's over here, I think. That's gotta be them. Can't see him back here. Hey, can't stay unhung right there, man. them over there. Mess that school up and on top of them too much.
recognize them because they all disappeared. I get back there, the angle I threw around that tree was bad. I need to leave right now. I didn't mess that school up. I'd love to get one more good one out of it though, front left. Dominating me, man. Switch with you. I think the faster you reel it through there, the less chance you have of getting hung up. You're fine. Just gonna be smart about it, not taking his head off. Make sure I'm not missing them, but Shaft's been fishing for a while. Just started fishing out deep a little bit. Haven't really been able to get on a few places. Got some fish here deep, but I can't can't really get them by. I've caught one. Just kind of been slow so far. I mean, caught I don't know ten fish or so. Just not not any big ones. Only six or seven keepers. It's been kind of slow. Gonna, gonna fish deep most of the rest of the day. I, deep has been definitely 100% better later in the day. The problem is a lot of the ones I'm catching out deep. I've actually been catching what would be after our weigh-in time. I'm hoping they'll start biting a little earlier than that. But so far, they're not biting that good for me. But I also don't feel like I've got to fish quite a few of schools that I want to. I'm kind of run around, try to get, get in on a few at some point today. About to change my angle.
careful on that big spoon now that I can cast it a little bit. Probably just lob it up in the air and it'll go out there. I'm not gonna smack you. You're good. <laughs> I saw them when I trolled down through here. Yep. Yep. Let's see, they're still in the same place. Yep, still in the same place. far enough. Wind sucks. I'm working around you, you're good. <laughs> but it's been blowing. Some of these lakes, you're better off just bringing an anchor. <laughs> Once you find a good hole, just throw it out there. But yeah. Yeah. I can't believe these won't bite. That's a bunch of them. Usually, once you get one to bite, you can catch a few. I thought I'd catch one after I caught that one. Have hella good balance to look through that camera. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I have to keep the horizon up too. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that's 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 another difficult task. That that would be very hard. Yeah. Have you ever filmed on like St. Clair's Erie where it's like seven footers? I, I have not. That would be rough.
I'm in South Carolina. I'm not used to fishing in that. Fish or a log? Log. Can't feel nothing on a Carolina rig, that long leader. Half time I don't know one until he's done ate it. I had to make a change, probably locations of the lake. I do want to bump up and hit two or three points, those main lake points. We're hitting a little road bed right now. There's fish down there, we just can't get, can't get the good ones to fire for some reason. Try to get a reaction strike. It's getting that point of the day anyways where it's been slowed down. It's slow anyways. That's why I'm probably just gonna have to go hit some timber or something and just get some three pounders and then that afternoon try to catch old big. Flip this worm on the way out. I mean, he's a keeper, but I might weigh him. He looked good when I set the hook. Scale zero. Why is it so little today? You're not supposed to be able to catch this many babies at Fork. Two pounder, maybe? I'll try to block the wind. I'll try to block the wind. Yeah. 2.1. All right. Two pounder. If you could see on this active target, how many? Pulled him down, didn't he? This is a good looking fish. Might have to get back to flipping the wood for a little bit. From nine till 12, that's been the best bite for me is just flipping that isolated wood. Thought it'd be a little better this morning on the other stuff, which we caught plenty of fish, you know, it's look at the draw getting that right bite. Holy cow, that's a big one. He just swam off the top of the tree. Might be a gar or something so big.
kept me rotating. He's in there looking at it. Two of them. He was hitting it. They just love tapping it. Dang. Got his fishing line. Typical. There's one little sweet spot right there they're sitting on. He's looking at it. Last cast right there. God, they're looking at it like every cast. No worries. Let's do it. Right. I don't think he's quite three, but he might be. Three point. Boy. It's so hard to tell three this. Eight. Three eight. All right. That was the most stable. It was <laughs> it's so hard. When it's like. Yeah. It's so hard when it's windy like this. It looks like an eight-ish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna actually make this easier. You wanna try standing up here and I'll try standing back there? Sure. <laughs> You'll try? Yeah, try. <laughs> I couldn't catch them that direction. I had to come up here and throw that way. They wouldn't bite. They're not very big though. They're a little bitty.
That was that was the first decent one. Oh uh, really? Yeah, I was sitting, I was throwing upwind, I couldn't catch them. I idled it first. They're sitting right between here and that stump. Yeah. I mean, I've only caught three. I haven't been here that long. But I caught two two somethings and a three and a half. No. I got like 11 pounds. What about you? What do you got? 17? Yeah. No, I ain't got any good ones. No, I just got you on Carolina rig. If you catch one on a jig, that's how I went on. <laughs> you test it out. <laughs> yeah, I sat here for like 15 minutes sitting that way, casting up here. Never had a bite, and I came up here and I, like instantly. Really? I'll ease up more because I can throw far. Oh, I got one. I think. I might have a stick. I can't tell. Uh -oh. Who put the stick? My camera's about to die. No, that's a stick. It's a stick. Right. <laughs> Thought I I'm both flip a 7 3. <laughs> Good thing we put the 25 on. Heavy duty. Boy, the first couple head shakes she did, I thought it was like a catfish or something. It was like, blah, blah. I have to re -tag. I got a little nick in my way. Oh. I wasn't even thinking about this dock. I'm like, I'm catching one off that next one. It's got brush under it. Two for 11.5. I guess we're just gonna fish boat docks, screw flipping that shell of wood. Should have three good ones right now. I'm gonna say that all day until we got five, just to warn you. <laughs> oh man, I would have had 20 pounds, but I broke off a 13 in a brush pile. Get on this. I don't know what that was, but that was a magnum just blue right there. I learned my lesson. There's no stripers in this lake. We come here a couple years ago, and I, I seen these just giants just Poof! out in the timber. I'm like, that's a striper. Didn't even mess with it. And then uh, when we were here in the fall. I ain't, I ain't caught a fish over three pounds the whole time in practice. Like my fifth cast of the morning, I hooked that 9.9 nine or whatever I got the Toyota on. I was like, I'm like, it's a striper. Like I'm just horsing it, straightened out two of my treble hooks, still got the thing in the boat. Like I thought for sure it was not a bass. Yeah, that one, no, nah, these weren't, they were eating something, you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't a blah, 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 boosh, it was fuck. Ooh. Like something big just blew right there. What? Oh. Oh, you're talking about a bass. Do you feel the mood in the boat now? A lot better. It's lightening up. I was a little cranky this morning. Yeah. Might have ruined your shot. Yeah, I was tight on your other baits and then kind of. Did you get were you tight on the fish when it came in? Because I had the dart hanging. Yeah, I, I, I was off of you the whole time. I kind of looked up, saw that it was still going, so I thought. 
Well, if you got something you can use from that, less well, OZ arrays. Live on the mix. Stay long, wait two or three. I'm gonna pull back and go by that tree where there's a couple big in the world and get out of here. Time to go sit somewhere, catch a big one. These ain't right. Give them one shot with the hair jig. Mustang point and just throw a freaking big worm out there. Grandpa for, for a little bit. We need a nine pounder real quick. Ready. Check this out just in case. There's a big school of bass right here somewhere. Up shallower, out deeper. Way out there, one of the two.
40, about time to get, get going, boys. shallower. Line here and just kind of throw on top of this point a little shallower to make sure, kind of like we were doing earlier. Give it five or six casts. If I could find these fish, it'd be awesome. I've seen them right up in there before too this time of year. Klaus want some of this? Come on, get you some, boy. They ain't biting. Good job. Let's go fish where we know there should be fish. Go ahead and strap her down, Jake. We gone.
they are down there. But it doesn't mean you can catch them.
Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Making sure I'm awake. Yeah, just oh, keeping you on your toes. I'm Let's go hit that other pocket. Live scoping, breaking his neck. I really hate to sit here after somebody just left. Because you're going to have to sit here for like 40 minutes to catch one, if they're in there. And I ain't staying that long. Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. Where the cobwebs off the Bassmaster Elite Series is back in your life. Vacation is over, and what a way to kick off our comeback here in beautiful East Texas at legendary Lake Fork. Every single time we come here, you can count on one thing and one thing only, and that is giant, giant fish. We've been here at different times of the year, and one thing doesn't change. You are always going to be getting the big bites, and look who's atop the leaderboard. The guy weighed in the third biggest bag in Bassmaster history last year to take his at the time, second Bassmaster win, now third Bassmaster win. Lee Livesey atop the leaderboard with 31 pounds even. And as you see, there's our home in beautiful East Texas. Known for long neck beers, a long horn, steers, and giant, giant fish. And we are at our takeoff facility, the Sabine River Authority. And I am joined by Bassmaster Classic Champion, two-time Angler of the Year, Davey Height, and one day removed from his birthday, so happy birthday. <laughs> and for a gift, what we've wrapped for you is we're gonna bring you to one of the greatest fisheries on the planet at one of the best times and not let you ever cast. <laughs> well, it's absolutely fun being here, uh, not being with my family on my birthday. What better place to be here uh, with you, Dave, here at the shores of Lake Fork, but you're right. It, you know, people ask me all the time, do you miss fishing? Do you miss the tournaments? When you're 
a cast away from Lake Fork, you miss fishing. I don't care if you're an elite angler or not. It's absolutely incredible being here. And, and really unbelievable, Santee Cooper last tournament. It seems like a very, very long time ago. But some great weights there. But, man, it is absolutely incredible what they're doing out there today. Lee Livesey with already 31 pounds. And usually he doesn't shine in these events until day three and day four. So, wow, just look out. He's got the all-time four-day record in his sights. He, and he, it's a big, big goal for him. He really wants to do that. Well, he's not the only guy who's got a rich history here. A former champion here weighed an 11-1 just a few years ago. The COBB, Brandon Cobb. And we'll kick the hit off with our Toyota Midday Report. And Brandon Cobb, he, he always got to watch from here. But man, he fished so much different than when he won. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very different. It's been warm. The lake is obviously lower, a lot lower this time. Brandon Cobb, he was full-fledged in on a shad spawn when he won here before. Uh, caught a few fish sight fishing, including that 11-pounder like you mentioned, Dave. But a lot of his his best fish were caught on top water. Just not so much happening that way here this week. And, and here's Seth Fighter on the Toyota Midday Report. See him fishing shallow also. Look at that shoreline if you're just tuning in. The lake about five feet low, something like that, five feet below normal. So not as many fish shallow for that reason. And then also just the... The water temperatures, it's really warm here. Thank goodness the wind is blowing very hard today because 90 degrees with wind is not nearly as bad as 90 degrees without it. But look at those fish, a great place to be here. So many fish like that, and we'll see these anglers be able to bring one over 24 inches to the scales today. Over 24 inches, and that, all the fish in this tournament, catch, weigh, and release, and we're on Lake Fork. And speaking of Lake Fork, man, one guy you're going to keep an eye on is a guy who has come here twice in a row and left here with a century belt, Patrick Walters. What I was saying is that concept of catch, weigh, and release was designed for this body of water by the original event that was the TTBC, and all those events have been good to Patrick Walters. Yeah, Patrick Walters is really amazing to say. I mean, in his young career, we, we often call him young Pat Patrick Walters. To have two century belts both being from here is absolutely incredible. The amazing thing, one of those was in the fall of the year. Think about when most people in the South, whether you're in, you know, in Texas or, or you know, the eastern part of the country, in the South in the fall of the year is known for very, very tough fishing conditions. Patrick Walters had one of those century belts in the fall of the year here. So glad we got a camera with him today. A little slower start for him than some of these other anglers, but it's incredible. Most of these anglers, including Patrick says, they really don't start biting until the afternoon. I talked about the TTBC. Well, this guy won three of those. He's a two-time Elite Series champion. you got to include Keith Combs on Lake Fork. Absolutely. Keith Combs, and, and you were here. I was not at that tournament, but the, the conditions were very similar. Wasn't the water low? So it sets up perfectly for Keith Combs. Water was low, and the fish were out, similar to how it's set up. And it really does feel like this is the first time we've come back here nice. since then that it is kind of lined up that way. Yeah. Like I say, you got to always keep an eye on Keith Combs. But the stars are kind of a, in line for him to have another 100 pound plus uh, tournament. And, and and even Lee Livesey, I was talking to him this morning. He said Keith Gomes, is, he's got it figured out. He's going to be somebody we're going to have to look out for by Sunday. But what about your progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader, the one and only John Cox? Yeah, absolutely amazing to see John Cox as we're talking about Keith Gomes and Lee Livesey fishing offshore and the fish being a little farther along. John Cox, leading angler of the year, oh, the fishing the shoreline like he always does. He actually has a, a depth finder on his boat today, which is a little unusual, but <laughs> it's just a joy to see John Cox enjoying a day out on the water. I was out, able to get out and watch him on the water some this morning. Ashley and I were out there. Man, he's throwing a top water, just having a, having a time. Everyone else I saw was fishing offshore. John Cox just catching them, you know, five pounder after five pounder. I think I saw him catch three and, and three casts one time this morning on top water. Well, he is the man with the plan saying, catch me, catch me if you can. The Marshal, Lee Livesey, 31 pounds already today. And his best bite is in the late afternoon. Yeah, absolutely amazing uh, yes. what we saw him do last time we were here on that final day. But did not have a good day one or day two any other time we've been here for him to start off at 31 pounds. But I've never, I've, I've gotten to know Lee more yes. recently in the last six months or so. He's got yeah, three Bassmaster four, victories in four years. And there's the majority of people who don't win three Bassmaster tournaments yes. in their entire career. It's really amazing what he's done. 
But he really, and I've never seen anybody, I've been around the Bass BASS tournaments for a lot of years, I've never seen anybody go into a tournament and say, I want to beat the all-time four-day record. I want to beat 132 pounds. That's, that's a high standard of goals there. An incredible standard he holds himself to. But Lee Livesey has delivered here time after time. I ask you this, Davey Height. He said that his best bite is late in the afternoon, but he's already got 31 today. Does that change the afternoon plans, would you imagine? Boy, I would. But yeah. there again, I've never gone in the tournament trying to say I need to calculate how I can get to 132 pounds, you know. You, but typically on day one of a four-day event, if you got 30 pounds, you start scouting and looking for different stuff and exploring. But Lee knows this lake so well, I, I, I think he's going to just try to keep catching everyone he can catch. Out on the water live with your progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader, to Barry Florida's John Cox. Uh, you know, so it's uh, kind of going slow. I, we're actually seeing a couple fish, and it's really sucking me in. I probably need to go back to just kind of fishing, but or staying back throwing these. But I keep seeing them, and I don't know. I'm not sure what they're doing. I don't. At first, I thought they were maybe fry guarding, but they're they're not coming back to the areas. They're almost like they're just up there sunning or something. I'm not sure what they're doing, but um, I mean. They definitely wouldn't be going back on beds, I wouldn't think, but you never know. But they're kind of acting like they're kind of just funky where they don't want to eat anything. And um, I don't know, we're gonna give it another minute and then uh, we're just gonna keep moving. I really want to get that jig bite going because it seems like when I get bit on it, it's like a four or five pounder. So I think we're gonna, uh, you know, as soon as we leave here, we're gonna go try to get that going, just kind of just start covering water and, and uh, yeah, see what happens. It's like you're leaving the tournament when you go cover John Cox. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like everybody's stressed and talking about technology and co and then you go to John Cox and it's like, huh, ah, yeah. why did you find your happy place? It's and almost it like he's not even in a tournament. You're exactly <laughs> right. And to be leading angler of the year, you would think they would, even for John Cox, it'd be a little extra pressure because, you know, that's, it'd be awesome. Another notch in his belt, no doubt about it, but. Not surprising to see him uh, fishing the shoreline, though. It's, it's, it's really not. It's, it's amazing the way he he does what he does, and it, it works out very, very well for him. And it's, it's hard to fish, you know. Someone else's fish, we talk about a lot of times, someone else, and he definitely does not do that. Well, we've talked about the Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, and that is your leader, John Cox. Let's have a look at our leaderboard right now. And you see John Cox got, came into this event with a 10-point lead over Brandon Polnick, but uh, a list of names. And as you think of the events coming ahead, this event is a key event. I mean, everyone is, is powerful, but Lake Fork is going to knock some of the names off that list, and it's going to make some of the major contenders. Yeah, you're exactly right. Looking at the top five there, only about 30 points, 32 points separating the top five. That will happen. Those swings will happen here at this event. It's a great lake. These these top ten uh, progressive angler of the year right now, all great fishermen have had a great start. But this is one of those tournaments where, gosh, you could – it's not easy to catch 31 pounds. Lee Livesey's making it look that way, but it's just not easy. There'll be some anglers here that go home with, might not catch 30 pounds in two days. It's just not quite as easy as some of these anglers make it look. Now over to ninth place in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points, Brandon Cobb. Uh, definitely not good. I don't even know what weight I got exactly. I got like a five. Five pounder and about three and a half. There's only two decent ones I got in little babies. It's been uh, it's been slow. I, what you run into out here is hard for me to make decisions on what to do because out here deep wise, like I've got some schools down the lake that I, I think are some bigger fish, but I have a feeling I might not be able to get on any of them. And I've got a couple places up here. I'm up the lake now. It's got fish on it. They're not they're not right now. They're not big. But there's some big ones might pull them later, and I know I've got these places. It's not not too crowded up here. 
So it's kind of one of those things, it's hard to run around when you know you got somewhere with fish to fish, but it might be better down the lake. So I'm gonna milk it out up here for a little bit, try to get at least one or two more good ones and we might run down later. It's really a, amazing when you, you know you're in a tournament that two and three pounders are not gonna do you any good. I mean, they're, they're just, they're not, they're just, you're just wasting your time. Honestly, you, you've got to fish for four plus pounders here to, to have any chance to do well in this tournament. And it was, it's, it's good, but also it's, it's, it's bad, you know, to, to think uh, you got to go catch five pounders or you're wasting your time. Yeah, and this is definitely not one of those events that you can manage anything. I mean, right. we seem to learn it year after year every time we come here. If you try to manage, you're going to manage yourself out of yeah. this tournament. Other than leaving spots, and you know what I mean? It's, I mean, you got to shoot for 30 pounds a day. Yeah. yeah, you asked that earlier about Lee Livesey with 31 pounds before what he considers the best fishing time. And I certainly believe he knows. He got it here so long. He knows his place. Better fishing in the afternoon. And in my whole career, if you had 30 pounds on day one, you back off. But you, you're right. You cannot do that here. Patrick Walters got beat last year on a final day with over 30 pounds, you know, uh, come from behind Lee Livesey with 40. So it's, it's just a, you have to have a different mentality with the five fish limit and being on Lake Fork. Yeah. I mean, that slot limit that, as I was saying earlier, was the whole reason that this, you know, the PA back in the day and, it, you know, all the folks from Texas Parks and Wildlife, they came up with this concept and weighed the fish and with the judges on the water, it was because there was, you know, Donato Ramos, Dan Freakin, who were two Texas Parks Wildlife Commissioners, and Kelly Jordan, ex-Elite Series Pro. Um, they fished together, and they said, man, we want to have a pro-level tournament on Lake Fork. I mean, it's the crown jewel of Texas Parks and Wildlife, but with that restricted slot that makes this fishery so good, it's impossible. So that's what led us here to... So you've you've emceed every one of these events, haven't you? Yeah, that's incredible. One, because I was not at those at those tournaments, um, but you've been here for every one. So the, the very first one of Catchway and Release, right here. Yeah, yeah, that was one. That was a team format. The first two years, that was actually a four-man uh, team, and Big Show's team won it. I think it was. Big you know, Show, Terry Scroggins, Frank Ippoletti, Chris morning. Daves, Top and James Nickmeyer. Wow. Um, there's, we're around a bunch of fish. They're just not firing yet. And that's what we've got to figure out what's going to trigger these fish. Oh, damn, he had it. It's, it's so amazing to watch. He's got three very big units on the front of that boat, and John Cox leading angle of the year. I think I might put a, my graph on this mid-season. I might put it on my boat today. Doesn't two very different to confuse fishermen. Says, John Cox said, I, I don't want to get confused by that stuff. <laughs> it just shows you both work. Obviously, Patrick taking advantage of all the technology and these electronics that he can and, and has caught over 100 pounds here his last two trips here so you gotta gotta know that works but then you also see john cox making it work without that speaking of 100 pounds the man that weighed 110 pounds in just a three-day tournament just imagine that wow. weight that was three days 110 pounds back in 2014 but let's join keith combs live today So how many anglers were in those ter that tournament? Do you remember? The first couple of years, it was a four-man team, and it was really unique because two anglers would fish in the morning and two anglers would fish in the afternoon, and the anglers that would get to watch their team. And then there was a strategy session, but those those were actually about 150 anglers because they were all separated. But it averaged around between a 35 to a 50-man field over the years. 
We have 92 anglers in our field, but atop the leaderboard right now, Lee Livesey with 31 pounds even. Chris Johnston in second place and Shane LaHue in third. This is the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. It is day number one, a stop number five, and it's just starting to heat up. Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. We could sell snow cones to Eskimos. He was one of the greatest salesmen, which benefited all of us because he sold the sport more than anything else. It was his foresight to put together that TV show and do it where people could enjoy it without being out on the water watching us fish. He got to film every tournament, show the champion, promote the champion, and promote bass. In every respect of fishing, professional, or for fun, Ray Scott built what it is today. Every person that puts a lure in the water owes a little bit of gratitude to Ray Scott today. The incredible and incomparable Mr. Ray Scott, unfortunately, no longer with us, but man, his legacy will last on for generations and generations to come. Davey Height, uh, you got to work with Ray. You know, I mean, what, what an honor to spend time with him and, and what an impact. Uh, absolutely, and, and Dave, honestly, uh, you, you take things for granted in life, we all do. Obviously, we've been talking about Ray a lot this week, and, and I didn't even realize how honored I am or should be that the, the elite fishermen today, I think there's only about six or seven people here. I'm not in the elite tournaments, obviously, but I did wave Ray, you know, I worked with him for 20 years. Um, there's only about six or seven guys that can say that, that are here fishing the elites. That's incredible how how time passes. And and, and I, I even talked to several this uh, the last few days that said, yeah, I never I never met him. I never even saw Ray Scott in person. That, that just blew my mind. But Gosh, what a, the, words can't describe, you know, you think, well, someone would have probably invented this sport, but you don't know. If not for Ray Scott, we, there might not be tournament bass fishing. Maybe it would be, it certainly wouldn't be where it is right now today. Absolutely incredible. And, and he was, we just saw that little clip of him riding in on an elephant. That's like the perfect visual of Ray Scott. He was like the leader of the circus, so to speak at times. But, but we all followed him and had confidence that, that he was going to keep this sport clean and, and, and help it grow, and, and everyone had confidence. You, you don't just follow anyone, but every, everyone that I know that I've talked to, a lot of them this week, followed Ray Scott because they knew that he was going to lead us to great things and, and, and help this sport be what it is today, no doubt. An amazing man and an even more amazing legacy. Just say what you said. You know, there's only a handful of anglers here in the Elite Series. They got to meet Ray, yeah. they got to spend time with Ray, but he is continuing to impact anglers and not just tournament anglers. You know, if you fish and not just for bass, I mean, the, what he has done, what he fought for, you know, the freedoms to have the fishing that we have here in North America. I mean, we all owe a debt of gratitude to that amazing man, a great promoter, but an even better builder. A builder, and, and, and I was gonna make mention of that. One thing that made Ray great is not only who he was, but he surrounded himself. I mean, Bob Cobb, and you, you see pictures of Larry Nixon, a uh, Rick Clun, a uh, Roland Martin, pioneers of our sport that Ray kind of, he knew that they were kind of special people and he wanted to, to help them grow. And, uh, you know, Larry Nixon was a hero of mine back in those days. You know, I was a fan of the sport. Uh, Ray knew how to promote not only the sport, but grow the people around him and, and pick great people to surround him. And he, he did a good job with that. What started off as a joke to many people, you know, with his dream of, of making what he said was the masters of fishing, just like the masters golf tournament. Well, years yeah. later, man, did he ever make the bass Masters something that has lasted for years and years to come. And, you know, he'll always be remembered for his Stetson cowboy hat and, um, the fringe on his jacket or tassels on his jacket. 
but man, his legacy goes so much deeper than that. And and we can't thank the Scott family and everybody, ever all the forefathers of bass that has had a chance to get us here. I mean, what Lee Livesey's on the water chasing right now is that legacy that was started by Ray Scott. Just absolutely incredible. I always affectionately called him the chicken that laid the egg, and man, <laughs> did he ever. What, for, for an industry. We could talk for days. I mean, it's just really incredible for somebody to to have a dream and 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 make it all happen. I mean, we all have dreams, but unfortunately, most a lot of them don't come true. But he had a crazy dream that that certainly has come true. And I I have no doubt that tournament angling would be a thing, but I I will argue with anybody that it, there is no way that it is what it is. Cause right. just look at all the sports that are out there. Really look at what fishing is and look at the sports that are out there that never got as big as the classic, never got, you know, why? Because they didn't have a special individual that literally took the sport on their shoulders and said, we're gonna make this a spectacle, laser light shows yeah. and, and elephant rides. I, I totally agree. And, and, and you're right, tournament fishing would probably be here, but not only you know, did Ray have that dream, have that vision, but he knew, I mean, let's face it, that first classic, not a lot of people even knew what tournament bass fishing was, but he knew that was a crown jewel of our sport and it had to be treated very differently. And, and that has made the classic what it is. And he knew that that had to be that way when he very first started it. Just really incredible, the vision that he had. Now over to our tournament leader, Lee Livesey. And he's about the only one in the field that would show some frustration with 31 pounds. <laughs> yeah, Lee uh, is great on this lake, and we were talking earlier. Here he goes. He knows this lake so well. I'm not so sure he's worried about burning a place because he thinks he's got places that fish will be moving to later in the week. Okay. I'm sorry that was funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't Bobby Lane me, but that didn't feel too good. We, we talked about Jake's record, Jake Latondra's camera guy. Well, that record doesn't come without uh, without some danger. You see, Jake Latondra's takes a shot from looks like a hair jig. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Part of the, there you see, ooh, good shot. Jake's always getting good shots. He got a good camera shot there. He also got a shot from a hair jig right in the, looked like about right in the gut. Well, well, I was thinking maybe a little lower. I think they might just be in those three trees right there. I mean, definitely make this cast and get hung up. Jake is not a big man, so I'm gonna say. <laughs> I have to be going somewhere I can catch a big one at 11.45. I might drive over with my trolling motor and see where they're all sitting exactly. That's what size I caught in practice there. He went in the third biggest bag in Bassmaster history, but he may now, right now, be currently the calmest person with 31 pounds that I've ever seen. He's, you know what I mean? I just go over there and catch a big one at 11.45. For, for obvious reasons, I've been talking to him a lot this week, and it's really incredible. You know, in, in football, the offensive coordinator usually have like the scripted first possession. You know, he's gonna call this play, this play, this play, this play, you know, have it all lined out. Not very often, at least for me in fishing, did I have? I, I knew where I was going to start, but then I'd kind of wing it from there. He's got his whole day scripted. You just heard him say where he wants to be at 11:45. He he has got a plan, and he's sticking to it. And it's just really incredible how good of a fisherman and how well he knows his place. Uh, and, and it's the only tournament I can remember thinking, yeah, 132 pounds is within his reach or someone's reach this week. Let's not count out Keith Combs. Shane Lee, you caught 20 pounds this morning before I could turn bass live on, you know. It's absolutely Hopefully incredible.
And you said something earlier, you know, it's not easy to catch 31 pounds, and that, that's true everywhere. But the truth about this body of water is, man, it is at times. Yes. Like, if you get to the right zone, on tree. it's literally messes your mind how quick you can put 25 to 30 pounds in the boat. Give them one cast in that tree and we're gone. You see hundreds of trees and he makes one cast to one tree. That's, that's not good for the rest of the field. No. But let's keep in mind, uh, Lee was in the tournament that Patrick dominated here. So it's not, it's not, we're not going to hand him the blue trophy quite yet, are we? No, no. And he was in the tournament that Brandon Cobb won and didn't, ma true. didn't make the 50 cut. Oh, I'd forgotten that. And wow. one of the most painful experiences, and it was very early on in me and Lee's relationship. It was his first year on tour. And um, I remember it being very uncomfortable. I was actually hosting live with Lee when Brandon Cobb caught that 11-1. And the worst part is we're off camera and he's telling me, he's like, I know that stretch. He's like, that's my crappie dock. And he's like, he's gonna catch a fish on the other side. And he's telling me all this. And it played right to the playbook when it was 11-1 and it wow. crushed him. But all of that crushing has <laughs> motivated Made him. Made him a better man. man. <laughs> yeah. And I'll also say this tournament has in the last term they, they're setting up a lot better for lee yeah. i mean everybody's got their time but but those two i mean you had a fall tournament and then you had another tournament where i mean fish were in and out you were right. you guys were all over the place both of those events there were a lot more fish on the bank yeah you know, roaming the banks or spawning with the low water and a little later in the year, uh, farther along. Here oh we go. Oh boy. One cast to one tree. That's boy, if he's not hung no. up. That's he ain't gonna help. See that? I don't think he's a five four though. Look at this. And it's not, mm, little baby. not gonna help. He will help. <laughs> That's the shaky head if you're out Sounds there. Sounds like he's got a little audience going farmer, with him today. Shaky head. He's got a hook for Lake Fork. Zero. That hook. Six. Six. Six, six? Six, oh, oh. Okay. Six, oh, oh. A little six pounder. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Fish had on a jig might have been big. Sunline 22 shooter. Crazy how strong that line is. Like I can't even find a bad spot in my line. You know, after something like that, you're like, I gotta retie it. So we had a 5-0, right? Mm -hmm. So that should add a pound to his weight, but that's that painful fish right there back in 2019 when Brandon Cobb took an Elite Series victory right here, and that's that is that is it right there. Literally almost jerked him out of the boat. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I could watch that a hundred times. What a day for Brandon Cobb. Wow. What a week for Brandon Cobb. Won the Elite Series title, won himself a Toyota Tundra. Things were pretty good for Brandon Cobb. Right now, top of the leaderboard, Lee Livesey with 31 pounds. We'll see how much that fish adds. I think it's gonna bring him up to 32. Being chased down by Chris Johnson and our early leader, Shane LeHue in third place. But one thing you can guarantee, all those 20s, some of them are going to turn into 30s, and that leaderboard is going to continue to change.
here at the Sims of the Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. Welcome back to our on location coverage here in Quitman, Texas at the Sabine River Authority, beautiful East Texas, home of legendary Lake Fork. And it's living up to the billing so far. And the crazy thing is, most of our anglers said the last few hours of the afternoon is when they do most of their damage. We already have one bag over 30 pounds and several other that are creeping up there. You see Lee Livesey with 31 pounds, even your tournament leader. And right behind him, the first Canadian ever to win the Elite Series event, Chris Johnson with 25 even. And Shane LeHue jumped out into the lead early this morning, and he slipped down to third place. But Derek Hudnall, just weeks after his marriage, just got married in our break, and uh, good to see him up the top again. I mean, he has had a rough, rough season this year, and wants to right the ship and this is the right body of water to do it on but uh, the guy who may just own the lease to this lake at least on day number one is the Marshal Lee Livesey. You're looking at that leaderboard and you... Shane LaHue got off the great start. Lee right Livesey, a great start and a great <laughs> continuation Still of a great there. start. And like you said, he is definitely one of the anglers that says uh, the afternoon bites a lot better. Fish still on there, he says. Fish still on there. See that? Here's where being a local, God, here's where we're catching not hundreds, but thousands of bass on this body of water really pays off. Go up there. And yeah, see you make you a good off. point for that. I mean, with this much timber. Well, I can't reach it, but. Some of those fish are, are going to wrap you up. And like it's almost impossible for this one is to like anything like else. The more experience you have of dealing with this, the, the better your chances. And I can't believe my line didn't break. You just think of the number of, I mean, as a guide out here, the number of clients fish that have got round wrapped in trees and yes he broke it off that sucks feel like a big one well just goes to show disregard what i was saying davy 32 pounds no that happens to, i mean even if you've done that a thousand Let's times go. we're gonna go jake thousands of times sometimes you just Sometimes they win. Come on, get in here. Yeah. He just said 32, and that's, that's what I thought. Pounds. Oh, progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year late. Raining right now. I ain't got much to work with, Set but we're fighter. making the most of it. I was on the one armed bandit. I was getting ready to retie and put a new trailer on and all that. A three something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three nine. Seth having Still a fighter jig. We got us a limit. Five bass, 20 and a half. We're gonna call it that two pounder with a six. It's gonna give us 24 pounds. Yeah. Just in your average lake fork day. <sighs> Dang, I'd have me a big old sack if I didn't suck. We're still gonna get them though. What was it again? Three nine. Three nine. I thought that was making sure I got that. Right. <laughs> well, you scared me there. No. I'm gonna have to play that back. Yeah. I'm, no. I want to say three sure. nine because I said twenty and a half, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh hell, you even initialed for me. You're doing my job now. Yeah. Right? You put that on there? Yeah. Okay. I did. I'm. Y'all shook up. Yeah. 
You want to hit that whiskey? <laughs> Sell you down a little? Yeah. I need one. A little tin cup. Let's go. Let's go. Not having a bite till 10 o'clock. Here we got five before noon. From mm -hmm. 10 to noon. Seth having a little fun with his marshal there, obviously. They take their job very serious. And uh, without them, we couldn't couldn't have these events like this. We wouldn't be here standing on the shores of Lake Fork. Just going to Denny Brower them. Black and blue. Yeah, and the commitment that they make they to it, it's not just what you see in the water. They spend s several hours training, you know, to, to be judges in this event. Seth had a slow practice. I think he's satisfied to be where he's at right now. So we're making the most of four docks. Okay, let's catch one. Just put his fifth fish in the boat just a few minutes ago. Well, Billy Lowen's hogging all the good ones. Keith Combs, a little surprising to see him only with 16 pounds, but he's certainly counting on the afternoon bite. One of the anglers that, you know, and, and I think, I sort of hate to say this, but I think maybe even Lee's a little surprised he's at 32 pounds at this time of the day. I know he expected to and hoped to catch 30 plus pounds, but I think he's a little ahead of schedule, even, even with all his knowledge of the lake. That's. That's a little better than he expected before noon, I think. Boy, this stuff was good, man. I don't know what's happening. Most of that, I just get freaking hung up. There's a side of Seth fighter that nobody sees. You know, we all know it exists, but he comes up at weigh in and kind of his MO is just, yeah, I don't care. You know, it kind of gives that. He's one of the most meticulous, you know, when it comes to knots and making sure your tackle's per He is so meticulous in, in the amount of time he spends on it. Nobody ever, they kind of take it for granted just because yeah. of how his personality is. Yeah, you would, if you didn't know him like you do, you, you would think that, yeah, he probably retires about every other day or something like that, but definitely not the case. He's very meticulous with his time. Davey, in your opinion, when helping the bite or hurting the bite? I think it helps. Yeah, I think it helps, yes. You know, there's a lot of people, oh, you don't go fishing on windy days, but but in my opinion, wind always helps. Even uh -huh. you know, summer, winter, okay. spring, fall, uh, the wind always. Man, we've hit a lull here. It's, it's got your friend a, in fishing. It's got in a kind of a bad rotation. As long as you can navigate. And uh, the wind is, it's kicking right now. Uh, Work it out, you know, with some fish, no big fish yet, but. Got a long time still, um, still to work this afternoon. Boy, this wind's making it hard to. It's making it real hard to get in there and scan and you know be very precise, which is what I had the intention of doing today. So we're gonna keep moving around and see what we can get on, and I think it's gonna happen. It's gonna take all day. Some of the places I've hit here in the last hour, I mean, man, they're... Keith Combs talking about the wind, and speaking of the wind, there's your uh, TH Marine Weather guaranteed. Watch.
Currently 85 degrees, and, and I'm thankful for the wind. As a pasty Canadian, I am thankful for the wind because uh, it makes it feel a little bit more comfortable yes. here because, man, it's going to be a, a cooker the next few days. It really is. 90-plus degrees in the forecast for the next few days. It's interesting to watch Keith Combs and Lee Livesey. Obviously, we've got cameras on them for a reason. The two of the best offshore fishermen in Texas in the in the country. Keith keeps the crankbait in his hand most of the time, and you see Lee throwing a lot of soft plastics. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. Well, atop the leaderboard, as you can see, that six he put in just a little while ago is represented now, 32 pounds even, a pound short of his goal. I guess 33 a day it'll take to get there and hold the all-time record. It is just day number one, but as you can see, Life is very, very good here on beautiful Lake Fork. Stop number five of the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. And Lee Livesey once again is leading. The Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Boats. And by Best Pro Shops. Ah, the Lone Star State of Texas. That's a scene right there that not everybody on the street would tell you is beautiful, is scenic to a bass angler, though. That is one of the most beautiful sights on the face of the earth because that is the face of Lake Fork here. Lake Fork, this incredible trophy bass fishery. Uh, Lee Livesey, the man on top there. Lee Livesey is just down the road to Longview, Texas, and from Ontario, Canada. In second place is Chris Johnston, Shane LeHue, Derek Hudnall of Louisiana, also from Louisiana, Greg Hackney and down through our top 10 right there. It's been a fairly stable top 10 for, let's call it the last hour, hour and a half, but uh, welcome to you. We got a couple more hours left from here in the Bassmaster studio sponsored by Marathon for our Bassmaster live coverage. And uh, then an hour after that, before guys, we uh, we take it to the weigh-in, of course, yes. and, uh, Ronnie Moore. Such is with us as well. And uh, we got a lot that can happen because we saw so much in the first three hours. It was unbelievable. Normally day one, it's kind of throwing a dart at the board and seeing who we have on camera. Maybe we go with some locals and some past winners and it ends up working out okay. I'd say this morning it worked out very well. Seeing Lee Livesey already 32 pounds halfway through the day, Such. I don't know. Is he going to be able to break that record? He's on pace for the record right now. He's pay on pace for 70 pounds today, right? <laughs> he is, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah. And Mark Zona, of course, <laughs> with us as well. And and Z, we, we look at Lee Livesey, that, that lead, that wonderful lead he's got right now, which is about 15, 20 percent better than his nearest competitor. What what has given that hit that, to, in your mind? What gives him that sort of advantage where he can he can bust out like that and almost run away and hide from everybody? Although we're not giving it to him yet. Tommy, before we get to that, I want to kind of rewind what you just talked about there. You made a comment that there's some people that maybe don't bass fish that look at Lake Fork and, and don't find it pretty. I don't want to speak for every Bassmaster live viewer right now, but really, who cares about those people anymore? <laughs> That's, exactly. That's an excellent just point. Being honest. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. Hey, to, yeah. to, to, to kind of talk about what you know, I'm just being honest there and factual. Um, what what Lee Livesey has done today is a lot like that final day when we covered him last year. He's kind of made it look easy, and I think he's lay, really laying back off of a lot of areas that he said he might need four and a half to five and a half pound fish. But the scary, really scary proposition that we looked at during our break with Lee Livesey was knowing individual trees, going through the forest of, of timber in this lake, knowing individual trees to get five to six pound bites because we've not seen him do that on a on a low water situation and the other thing to really watch the rest of it today is guys like seth fighter guys like daryl gleason that were at zero when we went to our midday break and all of a sudden now both of those anglers in the top 25 it shows and we talked about it this morning it can happen in a moment on this lake where you are at the bottom of the barrel and now you are in the top 20 in this event. That is what's special about this tournament. And really look for this afternoon bite for a lot of anglers maybe that are right now in a dumpster fire to kind of resurrect themselves. 
All right, we look forward to all of that, and, and surely it's going to happen for a lot of these guys. And and our top ten all in the t all in the twenty pound range suits right now, and probably further than that, Ronnie Moore, because some of the reporting was has been a little lagging. So yes, yeah. so our bash track is official this week because they're taking the scorecards and inputting them into the bash track, but they don't actually get finalized until they come in for weigh-in. Thank goodness, because technology out on Lake Fork, a little bit of tough service for some guys. They all pop in at one time, but when we take it in, I wanted to bring it into the studio to the screen of knowledge and kind of talk about. That Lee Livesey guy, that kind of elephant in the room, and he's the elephant in the room, Tommy Such Z, because I have never seen in all of my years of watching fantasy fishing and participating, I've never seen someone in Rapala Bassmaster fantasy fishing with as high of a percentage as Lee Livesey. Earlier this year, I believe it was like 60 to 65 percent for Cliff Prince at the St. John's, and this was his worst finish we've ever seen. I said, will this possibly be the same thing for Lee Livesey? 70 percent of the people picking him, his one bad event that he's had here was missing the cut and that was in a time frame pretty similar to this year but we see obviously 31 pounds and change 32 pounds right now uh, has him at the top of the leaderboard paying off big time but if you have the rest of the highest percentage people if you just go chalk this week and you just say I'm gonna go with the guys that everyone's picking really there's only two of them in the top 30 right now and that is Keith Combs and Lee Livesey your bucket D and bucket E picks everyone else kind of struggling um, I wanted to retouch on the fantasy teams that I picked just so we can make those for certain on day one I do have Livesey and Combs Stetson Blaylock who spent a lot of time here. Uh, Caleb Summerall, who obviously has the ear of Lee Livesey and has paid attention to what he's done. John Cruz, like Zona said earlier, has spent time here, especially when it was low water earlier in the year or in the in the in the time frame 2012 ish 2013 Masayuki Matsushita he's a great offshore we always ask Japanese anglers coming in what is the techniques and style they're good at he is a great power fishing offshore angler looking for him Scott Canterbury he's got four in the boat right now and then Clint Davis was my backup pick and I wanted to say quickly I had to sub in Clint Davis because we're missing two anglers this week for our uh, elite series field Brad Watley had to take a medical hardship. He's been dealing with a chronic illness that has really kept him out of 25% of the practice days this year. Had to take that medical uh, hardship before Fork, so he will not be here the rest of the year, but hopefully we'll see him next year. And we also lost Jesse Tacarante uh, due to uh, his family issues at home. He needed to be the caregiver back home. So there's some fantasy updates and some uh, adjustments I had to make for my team uh, yeah. at the end of the year. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, yeah, right. we've got the 92 yes, field 92. now, but we're still going to 47 uh, yes. for the cut, right? 92 for the full field, 47 for the cut still. The only checks that we're missing were the ones that are the lower checks at the bottom of the elites. We didn't take any $10,000 checks away. All right, we got three, yeah. three hours of bad fish. News, yeah, go ahead, Tommy. Got, got some bad news for Ronnie during our break. Talk to, I know, Ronnie, you and Sarah wanted to go to the next Whiskey <laughs> Myers concert. Seeing you left Lee Livesey off of your actual fantasy team smart move on that one right there um they're, they're, they said you can come hang out in the parking lot with sarah How's yeah that sound? i got that How's i that got sound? that email yeah and that's you know along with all the other ones yeah. they're coming to little rock here in september <laughs> so let's kick off our yamaha midday report here with three hours of fishing remaining starting with brandon cobb great place coming in here ninth place right. in angler of the year this is where he caught 114 pounds oh, to win in 19 2019. Yes, Brandon Cobb was a little bit worried about that Chad Spawn deal. He said it was on the tail end of it, really. He didn't have any sneaky, sneaky areas. And today we got to see this morning a little bit slow for him. Slow for somebody else, at least for the yes. first four hours. Seth Fighter with zero bass at 10 a.m. went on a major flurry. Big one right oh, there for Seth Fighter, getting himself four, in our indeed. top 20 Yamaha Midday Report, doing it as he said, dude. old school black and blue yeah. Denny Brower jig. And one of the things really looking at, I don't yes, know sir. if the fish just yes, set sir. up on this shallower timber on these boat docks, but something after our Midday Report, Seth did not do anything differently than he was doing earlier this morning went on one of those shallow water flurries. I'm sure yeah. Seth Fighter breathing a big, big sigh of relief. Great record of competition here on Lake Fork for Seth Fighter last year's uh, Progressive Angler of the Year. Let's go to Patrick Walters. Patrick Walters, who's joined the Century Club here multiple times. Yeah, Patrick Walters starting off with the top water bait earlier this morning. And you kind of had that Can vibe that, that it was going to you know, Patrick like Walters that. with such That's a, a very good track record, obviously, here on Lake Fork. 
couple good top water bites earlier today, and then it kind of tapered out for Patrick Walters. Going to need one of those big, big afternoons. So when I hit, it's no fish bigger than four pounds, a couple under two pounds. Patrick Walters still having a good year, 13th in progressive angler of the year point. We got ready. Take a look at Keith Combs, also a great legacy here on Lake Fork. He caught 110 pounds in only three days back in 2014. The, the Toyota Texan Bass Classic. Yeah, and Keith Combs with a lot of room to grow. And if you're just tuning in to Bassmaster Live, Combs making the comment, you got to see one of those 35 to 40 pound stringers on day three of practice, which would have been Tuesday. Keith Combs making the comment, really, anything that he put in the boat before 11 o'clock today was going to be bonus. Keith Combs sitting on four bass right now at officially just over 16 pounds. Spent a lot of time this morning with John Cox starting down at the dam, getting into a groove that uh, he was able to make this thing work. Right there. <laughs> this way he was doing at the dam for a good long while. Yeah, John Cox, one of the shallow water anglers across the country that just does not like being past four foot of water, said he did a little bit of that in practice and then asked himself at one time, what in the heck am I doing out here in deep water on Lake Fork? Some phenomenal top water strikes on his cane walker earlier today. A lot of the anglers that are throwing a top water bait said that top water bite was very solid early and should transpire later today. Five fish for 18 and a half pounds and Lee Livesey, the defending champion, probably the most feared guy out here, showing us why all morning long. Yeah, it was a pretty special morning for Lee Livesey. The very first spot he started on had zero bites. And if you notice one thing, Tommy, when Livesey started today, he kind of locked a jig in his hand the first 60 minutes. It's when he turned over to that six cents crankbait, DDE 300 size. He absolutely went to work. Big one here on a hair jig. Yeah, Lake Fork, baby. And after Lee Livesey got to about 28 to 30 pounds right here, you could almost tell he backed off the throttle a little bit. Will be very interesting to see how Livesey manages his day. Because he said before we went to commercial break and when Dave and Davey show was going on, he said he is going to hunt for an eight to 10 pounder the rest of the day. Flawless day for Lee Livesey. Yamaha Midday Report. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Hard for Lee to keep everyone quiet when he brings in a giant like that seven pounder that came earlier today, but uh, I, I think everyone's on to watching Lee live see where he goes, his ways and means of getting it done on Lake Fork here. Let's get back out to Keith Combs. He's got a six and a half pound average when he got 42 pounds last year's eight and a half pound average. Oh man. Oh boy. There we go. Look at that ugly son of a Well, you're beautiful, but you're kind of ugly. Beautiful right now. That's right. It's a big head Todd right there. Oh, sorry, Kirk. Six pounder. All right, we are zeroed. I thought that was five. a six. Yeah, five. It's a 
boat would quit rocking. I'm gonna hold the fish. J yeah, just lift, a lift, just lift him up a little bit. Okay. And I'm just gonna try to. Okay. It's about a still sign getting. My okay. hands are gone. What are you seeing? We got five four. Okay. That's a big item. That's about a five four. Oh, I thought he was a six when I first. Well, I don't know. But he wasn't. I'll look at him a little closer. There you go. How about swinging a five, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about right. that? Uh, on, a pl on a plug. We're out. Just keep him, keep him going. He ate it aggressively. It could be more there. Could be good. I think you're good to go in the back if you want to stand in the back of the boat, too. 21 and a half pounds to jump him into a tie with Jason Christie and Damn it. We called that too. He was like way out from the dock, man. Wasn't a great big one, but if you'd have called, mm -hmm. at least another pound right there. Yeah, that would have called a two for sure. Well, you get a look at those docks, you get a really good sense of how low this water is. <laughs> you ask yourself on a lake like this that has, it is a minefield of timber, why a fish would use a dock like that? Yeah. Z, we were talking about the available structure for, you know, we were posing the... Obviously, it's an offshore event, but Kyle, Jesse, and I were talking on the podcast about if an angler was up shallow, what's even available for him? And I said some docks, possibly the ends of them. Uh, uh, Craig Lamb's drone gallery had a couple docks expected. with 100 yards um, from the, from oh, the yeah. water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Way off. Yes. Uh, either too windy to fish everywhere I wanted to, or there's boats there, one of the two. So found us a little stretch out of the wind, and it's got some fish on it. Got a decent bag going. I haven't executed the best, but still doing pretty good considering everything. And uh, not real mad about it right now. I mean, I didn't think I'd catch 20 pounds today. And we got all three hours with pretty easy upgrades too. So hopefully we can get in that mid to low 20s at least. And uh, yeah, on live in the interview. Uh, Hopefully we can get up into the mid to low twenties and get a little better, a little better weight. We have plenty of time. Fish seem to be biting, so uh, just gonna keep grinding on them. Combs is gonna be our 18th bag over 20 pounds. Chris Johnson just called up about 14 ounces. He's up to almost 26 pounds. Big day for Chris Johnson. Butter still are raining. Progressive Angler of the Year. I guess that's what they call Bird Island right there. And let's take a look at our Bassmaster Rookie of the Year watch and Jay Shakura of Wisconsin still leading that one. Joseph Webster uh, a little distance behind. Jacob Fouts, Cody Huff, uh, Masayuki Matsushita, Jonathan Kelly, Matty Wong, Josh Douglas, Daisuke Aoki, and Alex Redwine. Matty Wong. Having a good season. Great start oh, yeah. to his year down at uh, yeah. St. John's River. He has been on a roller coaster. He's either in the top 15 or the bottom 15, and he's going to get that stability, hopefully, as he learns more about the Elite Series lakes and venues. Yeah, our last event, too, Chickamauga. Matty Wong having a good uh, top 15 finish there. So we're seeing some good things, as we always do. Impressive looks to the future with our Rookie of the Year race. We'll be right back. the size of that bass. Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. Into the afternoon on Lake Fork, the smallest impoundment we will fish during the course of this 2022 season. 315 miles of shoreline only, but that's at full pool. We might be closer to 250 miles of shoreline as it stands right now. So, uh, so a smaller place, our full field here of 92, but somehow they're making it work out there, a lot of them anyway, including 
Uh, foremost, Lee Livesey among them. Chris Johnston just moved up a little bit on the leaderboard. Suits just informed us of that. Shane LeHue's been up near the top nearly all day long. Big move up consistently up the leaderboard from Derek Hudnall also. Yeah. Chris Johnston making me happy in my fantasy team. The yeah. only bright spot, but yeah, Derek Hudnall mm -hmm. moving up for a lot of people. This is his region of the country he's going to be picked in. And this guy is one that was picked quite oh, a bit chasing as well. Her. Oh, get to it. Good reason. Patrick Walters is probably third on your chalk crew, right? Yes. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, God, there was like five of them. They're chasing bait like crazy. They just pulled back through. You ready? Nope. It's been, it took, it's been so long since it's been on Hatnet. He'd be two pounds even. Two pounds even. Thank you. Is it a good guess or is it an educated guess? There was like six of them. They were just running through. But they chased that shad. You could see like that shad was, I mean, it's 10 feet. I saw it. of 2020. It's a really different sort of set of conditions, much more challenging like for him. With everything in the fall, it was incredible to see his domination, winning by over 29 pounds. Second place had 75 pounds, but yet he broke the century mark every single day, being, like we said earlier, consistent. No day worse than 22 and a half, no day better than 29 and a half. Everything in the 20s all week, but uh, just sneaking in that century belt about 30 minutes before the day ended. Yeah, and that was one of those tournaments coming into here. Talking to our friend James Caldemeyer, he said if somebody could figure out how to catch those suspended bass in the timber, they could blow this away. That is exactly what happened in that tournament, and Patrick Walter still had the pedal down after he had it blown away the last 10 minutes of that event, if you remember. Yes, he would have won the event without fishing the final day. Yep. Yep. And he went out with just the goal of Century oh. Club. <laughs> he needed like 714 and it was sketchy for a while Turns there. A he had to really rally the end. Up. They're just chasing shed in here. They're not sitting in one spot. And so we're trying to do, get them going, but it's hard to get them going when they ain't sitting still. And we know Walters got second last year to Livesey, had the century mark, won in 2020. And then in 2019, still finished good, 29th place, made the day three cut there. Only had 51 pounds and change. Goodness, the bait just moved in here. Our first angler on the board this morning, Jacob Fouch just caught a 7 1. He's our 18th bag over 20 pounds. 19th bag, sorry. To say, you, you got to have 20 if you want to hang in the top 20. <laughs> Yeah, that that is 20 is going to be by the end of the day. That's going to be par. Yeah. 20 is the $10,000 check line. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yes, yes, yes. Will the cut be around 40 pounds then after Friday? Who knows? Day, day Close two. Two. Yeah, day two's on fork have been weird on the elite history. Like the only angler who was at the top after one day and did it again at a Lake Fork was Pipkins when he had back-to-back 30-pound -back days. And then we saw day three was so tough for him. So it's interesting. He had 40 hours off the water, though. We had that uh, break day in between. Oh, Remember? that's right. Yeah. That's right. Hey, Tommy, how's that? Uh, how's the Tommy Sanders drain the lake doing today? Uh, I haven't checked in a while. I, okay. I got to. I got Just to. curious. The, the drain the lake competition between me and Such and Ronnie, I need to check on that. I, yeah, see, Z, what Tom doesn't tell you, he gets first in the world, but he has two different teams. He's got a paper league team, and then he's got a digital team, and he likes to switch them up. So I don't know which team we're talking about here. He doesn't put all his chips in one basket. He has multiple <gasps> baskets. Hey, you know, I don't think I don't I don't think I like your tone. Well, <laughs> I don't like losing. No, how it was coming into the year into the event, Z, I was losing. 
to Tom by 150 points in our paper league and beating him by 150 in the digital league. So uh, depends on which one you want to look at. Yikes, big fish, Greg Hackney. Give me a break. You're <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> simple of a joke. Yeah. <laughs> big Hackney, 28 pounds, 7 ounces with a 7-4 up to second place. It's within distance wow. of uh, Livesey now. What he's doing? Yeah, and I've kind of, I've kind of watched Hackney's track today. He has lived in one area of this system just about all day long. Greg Hackney has not burned a lot of gas. Will be very interesting to see how he has caught them, as it looks like more than likely we will have a camera with Greg Hackney tomorrow, Bassmaster Live. Were you picking him, Z, for this tournament? No. No, nope. no. Nope. Okay. In all honesty, I kind of thought with the, the low water conditions, uh, it, Tommy, the only thing, and, and it'll be interesting to see tomorrow, is we talked about it a little bit earlier. There was a group of fish that came shallow yesterday, from hearing from a lot of our friends out on the lake. The anglers were off the water. And a few of them said, hey, man, some of those shallow water daubers, see what Seth Fighter has done the last, basically, 80 minutes it'll be interesting to see if hackney has a little bit of that same gig going on and if something like that can actually hold up yeah but no 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 Nothing i the one yet. the r really and i texted ronnie this when i was in buffalo last week i kind of thought so many fish in here. i i kind of thought christy was gonna be a, a, a handful in this tournament not shallow but Christy had a really good Texas yeah. Fest event here in a low water condition when he was swim baiting. Yeah, he had a 37 pound day, I believe, in one yes. of those events here. I think he was leading going he to the final way he lost. Has oh, unfinished oh. business to yeah. attend to. Always. That's right. Always. That good. <laughs> good point. Oh God, that's a big one. Oh my goodness, two of them. Mm-hmm. Moving. Go to it. Z Bass Track updates uh, the progressive angle of the year, and Brandon Polnick at 14th is taking over the top spot from John Cox, wow. who by one point, Cox or two points now, Cox is 26th. Of course, he's got a lot of headroom with uh, one pound, 13 ounce fish, and they're in a 2.5. What's incredible is the ability to rise and fall even halfway through the season. Uh, Jonathan Kelly stopped by the studio last week before mm -hmm. practice, before he made it down to Fork, said that he was in the top 25 after day one at Chickamauga. Obviously, we saw how topsy-turvy that was. He fell down and finished like 65th or something, and he went from moving up to 30th in AOI, being after day one, dropping back to 65th in AOI <laughs> just because he stumbled and fell below the cut line. So, the uh, and we saw that with Jay Shakira, tough day one. He ended up giving the rookie of the year lead, his big lead back to Joseph Webster. Day two, he had a good day and jumped right back up 50 points ahead of him. So the ability to rise and fall even halfway through the season is incredible with this group of guys. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't slip or you're gonna get no. a lot of opportunity back. Or pick, 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 quick. It'll get a little bit harder to do major climbing like last 
week, uh, last tournament at Chick, you know, Jacobson, Fouts, Mosley, and Robertson each gained like 25 points in the AOI from, from deep in there to in contention to make the Classic. Shout out to Joe. You know, ladies all over him. You married, Joe? No? Well, hey, here's your chance. <laughs> you want to say something to all the pretty girls watching Bass Live? Go on, Joe. You've got a boat on Lake Fork, ladies. <laughs> Come on ride. now. <laughs> He'll take you. Well, your DMs are going to be blowing up now. <laughs> yeah, I just searched <laughs> Joe on Instagram and totally found the guy right there with him. Yeah, exactly. It's not a common at all. <laughs> what a joke. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Ronnie, real quick, while there's actually a lull in the action, look at the Patrick Ball. There's another small one right there. You're oh my God. And I know I talked Stand about up. this the last time we had a, a fork tournament, but when I taped that show with Combs, it was the week of Memorial Day. So it was this time of year, right? It was actually on Memorial Day Monday. That worked out really good leaving on a holiday weekend to go tape a Zona show. So I went down there. And we went out to tape with cameraman Wes Miller, and we were around the Little Caney area. And it was stagnant at like three, four, five o'clock on that Monday, right? And I, Tommy, I, I know I told you this. They came up schooling on Gizzard Chad, and there was a 10 to 15 acre area of five to, to 11 pound bass. It, it honestly looked, it, it looked like Jack Crevel on the surface feeding for two straight hours. Two straight hours. I know. If I'd just tried to hurry up and swing him, I would have lost him. <laughs> I know, because he was small. I was like, eh. Oh my gosh, it's a big one. Those big ones tend to run. <laughs> See all the places you've been, public waters. Is there yes. any is there any place pounds of bass per acre that compares to Lake Fork? I know Falcon has the record, but it's so much more vast. Oh, it's so much more vast, yeah. yeah. And how to you know, you 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 can argue now, currently you could throw Ivy in there. Oh, Ivy. You know, obviously I don't think Ivy's as big a lake. 
Seth hooked up real quick. Finally got it, I one guess, out You there. know what's weird? And the remoteness you know what's weird, of Ivy, though. It, it's not around it, anything, agree. you know, yeah. yeah. It's not near Dallas. Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. Let's get a wait on this. Give me a big call, but I'll take it. 3-1. Three, one. Three, one. Three quarter pound call. Put us at 21 something. Joe's got a little more fire in his step now that uh, the ladies are watching. Yeah. Seth poked him a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Amazing what that'll do for a guy. It's amazing. I will say this. It's amazing yeah. what being in the boat with someone you've never met in your life for three hours and how you can talk as if you've known each other forever and pick with each other and be fun, have a good day, Oof. and you've never met each other before in your life, like Joe and, yeah. and Seth. Still, mm, that doesn't happen in my boat. That one we just no, not at all. I didn't say a <laughs> word for my first three hours in your boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just thinking out loud. Good comeback for Seth right there. Talked about it early today after talking to Seth yesterday. About as worried as we have heard him coming into a tournament in a couple years. Obviously, a lot of momentum coming off of last season. Seth Fighter knew he had a lot of work to do. And after the first three hours of competition today, sitting on a zero, big, big comeback. And trust me, Seth knows right now he has done his work, at least so far, for day number one here on Lake Fork. What's up guys, Seth Fighter here. We're getting ready to fish the Elite Series on Lake Fork tomorrow. I have not had the best practice, but caught a few nice ones. This lake's full of big ones. It's gonna take big weight to win this tournament, no doubt. Um, I'm gonna use a little one-two punch tomorrow. I've been uh, flipping a Outcast Tackle 5 8 ounce Stealth Fighter. That was my practice, jig hooks rolled over. Flipping that on shallow wood. Been getting a fair amount of bites like that. I don't think they're the winning fish, but that's the easiest way for me to get a bite on the lake right now. So we're gonna do that in the morning, hopefully catch a decent bag, maybe get lucky and catch a seven or two. And then after that, I'm gonna go out on the deep points with a DT20 from Rapala, crank that around. I haven't been getting very many bites. I haven't located any big schools. I know there's some out there, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lock a couple rods in my hand and uh, make the most of it. The Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Lynn Coda. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. And by Rapala. Getting ready to head into our final two hours of fishing here at the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork in Texas. This is day one action, our full field of 92 is out there right now. A fast, fast, impressive start by the defending champion, Lee Livesey on top. And look at Greg Hackney eating into that lead just a little bit, having jumped over Chris Johnston. Shane Lake Hugh was up there for a long time near the, in the second place and even in the first place spot for a while. Hudnall Mullins Kennedy, Brian New having a good tournament here, Greg De Palma, and the rookie Maddie Wong rounding out our top 10. Man, we have got a lot of 20 pound bags on the move for sure. Seth Fighter, one of those guys who's also been on the move today. Let's take it out to him for a BMC on point. Yeah, Tommy, and we needed that leaderboard to tighten up a little bit, seeing Greg Hackney chisel wicking away with uh, Lee Livesey at the yes. top of the leaderboard. But today, BMC on point was a slow, painful grind. Yeah. Seth yeah. Fighter, zero bites in the first three hours of competition like today for Seth Fighter. That. That like Swinging that dad gum East Texas stud yeah, right one, there. Dude. You heard it, an outcast tackle jig on boat docks, standing shallower timber. So Fighter coming into this tournament said he was very worried, said yes, his sir. practice, quote, sucked. 
BFC on point is going to be Seth, Seth Fighter at least salvaging his day. Yeah, he's not Sitting just now. over 21 pounds. All of that damage shallow so far today on Lake Fork. Yeah. That is your BMC on point. Seth Fighter. Yeah. Catching bass and getting dates for his marshal, Joe. Hey. Doing it all. Today. Right. Yeah. Multi-talented. Man, it wasn't so windy, I'd go out deep right now and just drag around. There's a big. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got it in the bottom jaw. Yes, sir. Why didn't I boat flip him? I don't know, Joe, Joe wanted to see the big flop. I just didn't like how it was in the bottom, but he wouldn't have come off. Yes, sir, the five pounder. We zero. Get ready to go when you are. Good. 4.15. Yes, sir. Almost. Just about five. I mean, you like, like a quarter ounce, man. Yeah, that's all right. I'll take him. It's a good lake, man. It's a good lake. We're just on nothing. On nothing catching them. That's a two pound call almost. Mm -hmm. All right, one more big one. Let's go. You well, weren't really doing nothing with it. Like, you just kind of was sitting there. Yeah. Like, is that a fish? And it just started to go a little to the right. Damn sure is. <laughs> Should have boat flipped him. I'm sorry, Joe. Don't be mad at me. He had on the bottom lip. I didn't want to. I didn't know what was going on. Into the top ten. Boy, that is a heck of a stringer. 24-4 in the last two hours, Ronnie. I feel like if I get a bite out there, it's going to be a six, seven pounder, you know. I feel like I'm mostly gonna get two, three pounders up here, but. That's the scary thing with Lake Fork Z is that you can be on nothing and come in with 25 pounds one day and then actually come in with nothing the next day because they just bit that day or you just gotten a good a good rotation. He's hooked oh, up again. Another begging, another begging. This one's coming in. Yeah. There you Let's go, go, Joe. Sorry, I, ma I made up for it there, Joe. I know you got a little disappointed when I bent down and grabbed that last one. Right in his lap. Okay, it's zeroed and ready to go. He ain't as big, but he's a call. Oh, Lake Fork's freaking awesome. Four seven. Four seven. Yes, sir. Twenty four back back four. Rows. In fifth place now. A little stealth Whew. fighter jig. Busting their head. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I ain't never been here before. <coughs> I didn't even get to put this thing back in the in the bunk. You want a break? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think I can handle it. D I M E right there, Seth uh -huh. and Joe. How many times yeah. you throw a black blue jig under a dock? Then all of a sudden. I wonder if Joel mind. hit a dart with Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. It's the Outcast Tackle Stealth Fighter Jig. Little tungsten. I'm going five ace, black and blue. Little Danny Brower's favorite. Just tipping her with a craw and just keep throwing under the dock. And I don't know, they just keep biting it. I don't know how many's under there. Crazy. That's like the fourth time we've fished it. Now all of a sudden it's on fire.
but it's getting hotter and sunnier. They might just be, might just be pouring out of that timber. Seth's made three out of four cuts this year. He's got him 38th place to start in AOY points the last as this tournament began. Like that one just locked on and was going. It's the best when they're going away from you. Are you serious? Yeah. Then you're supposed to be in 20 foot of water. Went from tragic to magic, Z. It did. Ron Look at that fifth place now, Seth Fighter. For two hours work, that's hey, pretty Tommy? good stuff. Yeah. Tommy, I'm going to ask you a question. We're going to have top five on camera tomorrow. What's it going to take weight-wise to get a camera at this point? Oh, my gosh. Is it going to take 25 five? I think it's going to take 27. 27, OK. I, All right. I agree with that. All right. Well, we will watch that leaderboard. Of course, we got our weigh-in coming up at uh, uh, 415 Central, uh, 415 Eastern time this, this afternoon. From right there at the Sabine River Authority, and but we got we got fishing fishing to come in the meantime. Don't go away. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. For all year long, this trip to Lake Fork, the fourth trip for the Elite Series anglers to this incredible fishery here in East Texas, and. Man, oh man, this is day one, full field today and tomorrow. 47 will fish on Saturday and 10 only on Sunday. Take a look at our leaderboard right now. And of course, it surprises no one that our defending champ is on top. A great, great effort this morning. Just absolutely pounded all morning, morning long. But Gerald Swindle, look at this in about three hours. He has put together an impressive pack of fish. It is just something to, something to witness. And look for Gerald Swindle to be uh, on camera with us all day tomorrow. That'll be fun to kind of check out what he's been doing there. He's a big fish guy. People can remember some giants that he has put in the boat. He could, he could pop up with a 10-pounder at any time. Any of these guys in the top 10 could do that. What an exciting first day. It's just everything you would hope for. Sure enjoyed uh, Dave and Davey a few minutes ago taking us uh, through it all. And Dave Mercer with us right now. And Dave, certainly appreciated all your great thoughts on the uh, on, on uh, Ray Scott, as we're remembering Ray Scott today and thinking about him throughout it. And, and, and talk about his effect internationally. How did, how did his influence reach into Canada, even back before you were born, probably? Yeah, Ray Scott, um, his effect, you know, I think sometimes we, we were so close to Ray and so close to it, you don't realize how far reaching it is. But one thing about Ray Scott is I, I remember the first time I met Ray Scott was actually at the Toronto Boat Show, and he had come up there for an event. And, you know, when he walked in the room and he kind of laughed about it, he says, it doesn't matter what country or what state I'm in, I'm about the only person that people respond to that walks in with tassels all over his coat and a cowboy hat. I mean, Ray Scott transcended bass, really became um, – a character when you think about it i mean whether it be colonel sanders or whatever iconic character you want to compare it to that's what ray scott was and uh man he did so much for the sport and so much outside of all the hoopla that you hear about like you know the riding on the elephants the lasers all that stuff that's the showman ray but the amazing thing is what he did to fight for the resource to fight for the opportunities to fish um i talked to steve bowman about it earlier this week in one day Ray Scott put 250 something lawsuits out there when you think about it. And it wasn't against a person to him. It was companies that were polluting bodies of water or people that were taking advantage of access and things like that, trying to shut it down. Ray Scott was truly a trailblazer in so, so many ways. And, uh, We'll never stop being grateful for him. But it, but the amazing thing is if you heard Davey on our live segment this morning, he said, you know, there's probably five or six anglers around the Elite Series that actually got to work with Ray. But even though they didn't get to work with Ray, they know Ray mm -hmm. and they embrace Ray because of, I mean, his work went on through generations and will go on for many years, years to come. Hey, what's funny is looking at these photos, it's scary how much Larry Nixon looks 
identical to Don Johnson in the movie Tin Cup. And, and going to this tournament, <laughs> really, real quick, going to this, going to this tournament that we're in right here, uh, where it's generally been, Dave, it's been the house of Bass Fest. This is an event that Ray would have been proud of because of not only the fireworks that happen out on Lake Fork, you have celebrated this event, Dave, for a long time. We have seen the videos that we'd love to share that we cannot share that has gone on at night. What, what are the festivities this week that are gonna transpire? <laughs> I, I have no idea what you're talking about, number one. But, yes, it's always a festival at a Bassmaster event. we got some musical entertainment here, all sorts of stuff going on, and we're just getting wound up. But, but you mentioned the history of this event, and I can't stress it enough. I mean, when you look at the whole system and everything that's coming to this event, just like this community, if there was no Lake Fork and if the fishing wasn't as incredible, none of these businesses would be here. And if it wasn't for Lake Fork, this system of the way we're running the tournament wouldn't be here. This was thought up, you know, uh, many years ago by two Texas Parks and Wildlife Commissioners, Dan Freakin and Donato Ramos. And they were like, we want to find a way to highlight the crown jewel of Texas Parks and Wildlife, which is Lake Fork. But because of the restricted slot limit, you just couldn't have a pro level tournament here. You have to be, you know, between 16 and 24 inches. So that's why they started the catchway and release. And that's, you know, obviously gone on in the fishing industry to be kind of a big deal. And, uh, and that's, you know, where it all started. It all started because of the giant fish. It's the whole reason we're here. It's the whole reason all these businesses are here because of the giant fish that Lake Fork has. And as Gerald Swindle proved, I mean, 30 pounds seems like a daunting task, but man, it can happen quick on this body of water. Hey, Dave, you covered so many, obviously, after last year and what we got to see transpire this morning, all eyes on Lee Livesey. But if you go through the time of the events that you've covered, we're going to take a look at Keith Combs day so far. Keith Combs is a lot of and look. This lake has been popular for so very long. But you have covered some of the tournaments with Keith. Com Keith Combs is a lot of the popularity of Lake Fork the last 12 years. Oh, Combs has a dominant stretch here. And, and honestly, the first time in a number of years have we been here that it kind of seems like it's setting up for Keith. You know, he likes to crank and he likes to be offshore. And, and we've come here, you know, we came here in the fall. We've come here when fish were in and out. But this is the first time that the majority of the fish are now offshore and kind of setting up for Keith Combs. But what Keith Combs has accomplished here in the past is unbelievable. You know, like that 110 pounds gets thrown around. And it's not till you stop and think, man, that is three days. That's 15 fish for 110 pounds. It's, it's unfathomable, you know, when you really think about that. In that tournament, I believe on day number one, he started this tournament off with, and we're getting excited about Lee Livesey with 32 pounds. Keith Combs had 42 pounds on day one of that event. So, I mean, 30 is not, that. that's the thing. If you're just tuned in this and you see a bunch of guys closing in on 30 and you're like, oh, that's kind of the cutoff mark. Uh-uh, you are on Lake Fork. 30 is nowhere near the cutoff mark. So I, I'm, I, I would think we will see a bag that gets close. Uh, maybe not today, but we're going to see it by this weekend, a high 30, maybe 40-pound bag. Dave, Dave, you have uh, you've known you've worked with Lee now in in the third year of, of working with Lee Livesey. Talk about, I mean, that first year he made that great circus catch in his very first tournament down in the St. John's and sort of let everybody know about his presence. But talk about his growth uh, through those through those intervening years. What Lee Livesey has done is amazing. I mean, the first year on tour, he did the circus catch and, and you know, qualified for the classic and had an okay year, but, uh, you know, didn't contend for any. The end of his second season on, on tour, he won that event at Chickamauga. And, you know, literally in just over two years, he has won three Bassmaster events. I mean, he's been around now four years, and three out of those four years, he's got an Elite Series victory or a Bassmaster victory, the last one being an Opens victory because he likes to share the love, doesn't want it all to be about the Elite Series. And here's the crazy thing about him. 
upset about last year. Like, literally has told me, gone out of his way. You're out having a nice time. There's no, no talk about fishing whatsoever. And he's, he will bring up the fact that, like, I want Roa Huss's record. I was this close to that one-day record. He really felt he had a legit shot on that Sunday, and he kind of is kicking stones that he didn't break it. And I love the fact that he came into this tournament shooting for records. I mean, I hate, you know, you guys know it. It's fishing world. I mean, everybody downplays it. If I catch him, I catch him. If it's my time, it's my time. I love the fact that Lee Livesey says, man, that's a target, and I want to hit it. Hey, Dave, that's fine that Lee Livesey wants him to have Rojas's record. Do you want Lee Livesey to have Rojas's record? Because I think I do. <laughs> I do. Yes, yes, very much so, very much so. Uh, just because, I mean, it's always exciting to be part of records, and, 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 and Rojas has reigned long enough. I mean, uh, I mean, him and the ladies have toasted enough. It is time for the ladies to toast with somebody else. Dave, thank you very much. Well put. Well said, Dave. We appreciate Dave Mercer and everything he's doing, and he's far from done for today. Don't forget the weigh-in starts at 410 Eastern Time right here on Bassmaster.com, and there's a man who's going to be sitting in the Yeti hot seat. Will he be oh, able yeah. to take the heat? Will he be able to fade it all the way through <laughs> that weigh-in, that uh, sort of virtualistic weigh-in that we're going to have there? Yeah, the interview time. Yeah, the yeah interview yeah. time. Bunch of bunch of sound exactly. Bites. Yeah, yeah. Different sort of weigh-in and a different Love sort that of Yeti turn. hot seat. Oh man, it's so warm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was such a great wrap up to that. John Cox, it Patrick Walters, Brandon was. Cobb out there. Well, that is the farthest we have seen John Cox off the bank today, no doubt about it. He was just going around a piece of timber, too, to just not avoid hitting it, you know? That's why he went out. I do wonder when that 45, and there are, what do you say? five, six different bodies of water that can maybe break the 45, like that it's feasible to do that if you hit it perfectly. And so the opportunity to do that is much maybe different than breaking the all-time big bass record. Mark yeah. Menendez was in studio and got to tell us last week that he had the, the record had been 31 years since Bob, Tin, Bob Tindall caught the, I think, 12-pounder at the St. John's. He caught a 13 right. at Richland Chambers, and two years later he had lost the record, uh, I think, uh, was it Mark Tyler? Tyler. Tyler yeah. from California. Yeah, yeah caught it at the Cal 14. Delta. So, like, you can hold a record for 30 years, or it could be gone the next year. It just depends on the right body Absolutely. of water to do it. Well, that is a, that is a fairly staggering top 10 right now going into tomorrow. Uh, obviously, it's changing about every 10 minutes, but uh, it's going to be a fun day tomorrow. Oh, I think so, too. Absolutely. Yeah, David Mullins just landed a 6-12 to get up to 27-6, fourth oh. place. Mullins would have so. had just a smidgen of a better event here in the fall of 2020. He would be the angler of the year that year, but right. I he remember the, the five guys at the top of the AOI race all basically were like, who wants to take this? Because we're all going to struggle at Fork in the fall. Austin Felix could have won Angler of the Year along with his Rookie of the Year. Yep. Whitaker, Winlet, Mosley, Walters, and Mullins were all right there. Walter, Walters obviously wasn't there at the beginning of the event, but winning the event jumped all the way to the top five. Mullins was our pick to win by our anglers, uh, our anglers feature that we run on, on Bassmaster.com yeah. as they pick their fantasy yeah. favorites. Yeah. For this tournament? For this tournament. Of course, it was just who was who was the one that picked. For, they take five five anglers, and each one of them picks oh, for the so five categories, the five buckets. Oh there. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for this tournament. One pound in that place. Probably got them 29 pounds. I would say this is by far the hardest sport to do fantasy fish to do fantasy sports with is picking them because it's not golf. You can do fantasy golf, and obviously it's an individual sport, and, but it's on a contained course, and everybody kind of has the same lies they can go for depending on how hard you hit it or how far you go, which clubs are good for you. But at Lake Four, I mean, you can just you can be the best offshore angler in the world and just not find them or lose them. You can hit hit every good shot but just miss hit it or top, you know, same yeah. thing here. It's just hard to predict 
who will catch slash lose the fish. Although the chalk was dead on today, so, so uh, far for yeah. at least one of them, yeah. yeah. The yeah. other th the yeah. other three so, were below 50th, yeah. you know. So Tom Brandon Cobb hooked up here. Small. So Ronnie, with Way that being be. said, do you feel that you know you're the you're the fantasy dude? Do you feel that fantasy fishing is much harder than fantasy football? I do. Okay. I do. Ow. Zero. Not yet. Zero now. Ready? Go. Quit. Two point nine. All right. Two pounds nine ounces. The thing that's Z, well, Z, oh, if oh, I had four. if I had left. five wide receiver slots in fantasy in football in each, and I had yes. twenty wide receivers to choose from each slot, you have the yeah, ability to mess up a lot more yeah, here. These are all starters. We're not worried about who's on the bench Definitely and who's starting. These are all starters, and you're trying to decide which one in each bucket out of twenty guys. Yeah, oh. we rarely have a fisherman go out with a concussion after about a couple of hours of fishing. <laughs> so there's that. You know. Oh, it's happened though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sprained my ankle at takeoff. But you get that analogy, it's kind of, I mean. That's wild. Boy, hanging with Seth today, he has done a lot with a little bit. You said he was he was genuinely concerned when you talked to him yesterday. Oh, it wanted the camera out of his boat. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh... Practice sucked. Um, I was kind of hoping for like 15 pounds and just catching a limit, which wouldn't be any good on this pond anyways. Uh, tried to fish what I could this morning. No dice. Um, I got on a stretch of docks that I wanted to fish. Only got to fish one dock. Broke a big one off on it. Came over here, some docks I never fished before out of the wind and I've been going up and down four docks for the last three hours and got 24 <laughs> some pounds in the boat. Um, so, I don't know, pretty good compared to what I was expecting, I'd say. What made you want to come to these docks? There's only about, there's not many docks that got water under them on this lake. I just seen on the Lake Master, it's a little deeper right here. and There's probably a little bit of water there and there's not four footers blowing into them. And, you know, I had some bites in this general area, not on this stretch, but um, I'm just kind of freestyling and ran into them. I mean, I wish I had a better answer for you, but just dumb luck, really. Dumb luck. Oh, what a difference a day makes. Seth Fighter can tell you about that. About his great couple of hours fishing today, which is putting him right in, the, right in the thick of it all. Seventh place currently as it stands right now. Striker Daily Trivia. We're all, we're doing all Ray Scott all the time on our trivia today. Yeah. In how many Texas lakes? Oh, no, we're not doing all Ray Scott. Okay, I just thought we were. In how many Texas lakes have anglers caught Sherlunker Legacy Bass? That would be your 13 pounders. How yes. many? In, in the months of January to March. Right. Yeah. yeah. So they can so, the so they can work with, time, the, yes. with the pro with the Sherlocker program. Right. right. Was it uh, program, 37? Was it Sherlocker? Was it B? There 55 How, lakes, 67 lakes, or 75 lakes in the state of Texas? Give that a thought. Texas is big, and the fishing is good. I'm going to take a break and come back and pay that one off on. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Skeeter. 
got another half hour or so of live coverage from day one here at Lake Fork. Sims Bassmaster Elite, fifth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Our Striker Daily Trivia left you with a with an East or a Texas at least theme question. How many Texas lakes have anglers caught Share Lunker legacy bass from? Those are the 13 plus pounders in what month? Ron? January to March, like January the spawning season months, yeah. 37 different lakes, is it 55, is it C67 or D75? Mark Zona? Tommy, as you know, I uh, pretty much live in Texas half the yeah, year now. Yeah. I'm going to go heavy. I'm going heavy for a reason. I'm going 75. Heavy D. Okay. Good job there. What do you think? It's, what do you think? It's too round of a number. I think I think it's 67. I'm, I'm going to go with you on 67 as well. We'll see what happens. Z's intuition there. Oh, Z. The spring. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. That's what all that time spent in Texas pays off. Of course, what a joke. All those, <laughs> they all right. those 13 pounders <laughs> over to the Freshwater Fisheries Center in Athens, Texas, also in East Texas here, Love and uh, create some uh, create some offspring that are bigger, and grow faster, and turn into fish like you see here at Lake Fork. It's that fighter. Big move up the leaderboard. Starting in late morning. That's a big one. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. It's like a maybe call. Yeah, he might have called a call, but. Mmm, that's about what he is. It's about a 3 9. Well, he pulled a little bit when I hit him, though. Giving him big head shakes. Well, I, mean, I think he's gonna call, but it ain't gonna be by much, a couple of ounces. <laughs> oh, we got an ounce. Yeah. We got one ounce out of her. <clears throat> it actually did move him up though. He was tied with Derek Hudnall, and now he is oh. ahead. Well, there so you he go. He did gain a point. There's a position. <laughs> oh. oh. It has been a theme. Seth Fighter having a miserable, what he said, just a sucky practice. And I'm not going to lie. For the first three and a half hours to four hours of fishing today, Tommy Sanders, it's fair to say, it sucked yes. with Seth Fighter. Mm -hmm. And Seth Fighter was literally made the comment, I am absolutely terrified. And at about 10.05 yes, is sir. when Seth Fighter started yes, doing work with this outcast tackle signature jig. Going yes, to work sir. on standing timber, but the majority of his damage is, you heard him say, slow and painful off of these docks that do not have a lot of water on them. Seth making the comment that the key stretch of docks he wanted to get on were pretty much loaded up with other anglers. Going to work and putting a great, great stringer together. Seth Fighter not only salvaging his day one, finds himself in the mix, in the top 10. Power pole replay of the day. Always an unfinished business with Seth Fighter as well. <laughs> no. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Well, Does nah, not I guess matter, it's all it all applies. Very, very weird to see Seth Fighter's year this year through four events and even today. Literally, we had him on camera so much last right. year, and he did such a great season being first place in Angler of the Year, obviously. He's inside the classic cut, and it seems like he's having a terrible year. He's in the 30s in points. Yeah, came here 38. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Right Barely, Ronnie, yeah. That bar that he set, I mean, last year is just never missing a camera day, basically. Yeah. No, oh, I'm finished business. We are in the ditch. <laughs> God, I will crush it right there.
Yeah, fighter hasn't finished better than 35th this <coughs> year. They're just hiding in that timber right there somewhere close. I think that's them right there, right on the tip of that thing. Another story, pretty much to keep your eye on. We said we talk about this a little bit. A lot of anglers helping themselves in their career on the Bassmaster Elite Series. See a Greg De Palma, a Daryl Gleason having very good days today. Needed to happen for those guys. They got to got to continue to happen. Yes. My ones ain't doing nothing but looking for another spot, and not one that he found. Hey now. Ooh. Hey now. <laughs> come on, Bubba. Yeah. Come on, Mullins. If you want to fish, just come over here and fish. Right over around the timber. I guarantee you Mullins catches him today. He's a cranker, good offshore, stubborn. No way he didn't catch him. He would be correct on a couple fronts. That's right. That's bringing it full circle. Full circle right there. We mentioned it, Tommy, in, in the live well. There's there wasn't nine. There aren't 92 good offshore spots on this lake. So it would be very shocking to see someone be able to survive uh, on spots to themselves. You're gonna, gonna have to end up sharing it with somebody at some point. Uh, no matter which way, day one, day two, day three, day four. It's small. Be a different story on Sunday. Crazy to think that was awesome. Five and a half feet less water, and it's 6,500 less surface acres. You were talking about the miles of shoreline earlier, Tommy, but the sheer fact of being that low, condensing all of those, all of the opportunities for the shoreline to be gone. Put them really tightened up out there. That's why that had literacy with the bold prediction of everybody in the top 10 final day will probably break 100 pounds and potentially we could get the all time record. That would be something. I was looking at his fish catches last year on that day and he said he needed an 11 pounder to break the 45, the the, the Rojas record. With him come, and then with 42-3, he had like a 7-14 and a 10-14 to, to it. tie it. Thanks for warning me, though. You could, you could feel it coming out. <laughs> and I like David, it's not that at all. He just, too obvious with it. Biting on that other hole he was on. That's the group that had the best group of fish, was where he just was. I knew he'd find everything. Oh, that shore felt like a bite. I 
one or two more, we're gonna go. See if we can fit in somewhere. They ain't here. stick. Are more experienced experienced anglers showing out today. Swindle, Acne, Kennedy, Jay Yellis is 12th place, 23 pounds. Wow. Four ounces. Helping himself in the AOI points. Came in 46 right now where he's sitting. He'd, he'd be 30th inside for his uh, 17th classic qualification. Fritz is 20th. And Gary Klaus with our 810, the Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the Day. Four fish, 1811, 29th place. Fills his limit out with a nice one that measures. He'll get over 20 Let's pounds go. more than likely. So Z, what do you do if you come in with 11 or 12 <laughs> pounds today? What do you do tomorrow? Pray? <laughs> Say what Davey said? Pray? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> your, 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 your chances of a check are, are almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one, one of the reasons I say that, unless you do something totally oddball, you know, a lot of these places that they're getting offshore, well, caught else. offshore today, I've been bit. watching 30, 45 minutes, very closely. Up. They're not here right now. A lot of your leaders in the top 20 have been hopscotching the exact same offshore stuff today. And to get in the mix, if you got 10 pounds, you're going to get barked at tomorrow morning. Yeah. Even if you have 27 pounds on day one, you might get barked at in the middle of the day. Possibly. Yes. It could. <laughs> Seems like it's happened. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we got more fishing coming your way. We're going to take a quick break here in just a couple of minutes in the and uh, get you ready for the weigh-in. Don't forget that that weigh-in comes up at 4.15 Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com. We've got Lee Livesey still on top. He's had his 32 pounds for a good long while. And Gerald Swindle, the veteran, making a huge move today. And Greg Hackney ditto for him. We'll be right back. The Sims Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. First of four action-packed days of fishing here at Lake Fork at the Sims Bassmaster Elite. Day one has shown us plenty of action, that is for sure. We have seen some terrific performances today. You guys getting around them and really going to town on them, doing some great, great fishing. It's great, great efficient fishing out there. Lee Livesey, of course, the best of all of them so far, but Gerald Swindle, what a great move he has made today. Same thing for Greg Hackney. David Mullins, picked by a few to be one of the favorites here. Chris Johnston, Shane LeHue, Seth Fighter, a magic couple of hours for him. Direct, uh, Derek Hudnall, Steve Kennedy, and Brian New. So let's take a look at our marathon peak performance today. Oh yeah, no doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. Marathon peak performance started early and often for your Lake Fork guide, Lee Livesey. 
made the comment coming into this tournament that it was a little bit tough, yet he predicted it'd take 133 pounds to win this event. Talked about that earlier here on Bassmaster Live. And it was really when he kind of switched up. He started off this morning fishing a jig a lot. And really the first 60 minutes were slow and grimy going to a sixth sense DD 300. Lee Livesey doing almost all of his damage except for this one right here. Caught this one on a hair jig and I believe he backed it up with one worm fish later on. But that crankbait, that sixth sense crankbait, the majority of the damage Lee Livesey did this morning and really he kind of appeared at least backed off the throttle quite a bit after about really 10 o'clock said he was going to go looking for a nine to ten pounder has not happened so far but your marathon peak, peak performance was the three three first hours of fishing today with Lee Livesey and it was a flawless peak performance. When you break it down, Z last year he had a big day one as well, 25 plus pounds on way on a route to his win, but he had a 215 in his bag today. When your smallest wow. is 514, you're definitely going to break 32. That that is one thing that's going to help him going forward. With no one else having over 30 right now, the fact that he's going to have a cushion after day one will be huge going the rest yep. of the year. Yeah. And the other thing with that marathon peak performance is to see it kind of looked like he laid up in a few areas where we did not see other competitors. One of the things you were asking, Ronnie, before we went to break is if you look, if you had, you know, 10 or 11 pounds, I mean, generally you, you do, see yeah. people that don't have a lot of weight back off of your leaders on day two if they're totally out of it. An interesting thing that I said, I said a, a lot of your guys in the top 20 have been hopscotching areas, unlike mm -hmm. A guy like Seth Fighter or a Greg De Palma who has bunkered into one spot all day long. I said a lot of the leaders are hopscotching the same areas. So are a lot of the guys that have sucked today. A lot of the guys that have not caught them have hit the exact same areas. Some of your leaders have throttled them. A lot of the thing that we hear go on, you know, on this lake and offshore tournaments is timing. And it seems a lot of guys hit. And it also seems a lot of guys missed here offshore on day number one. Yeah, looking at the private version of our, our, of our map, we don't make that public just for the angler's sake. And looking at that Z, guys that have the upper 20s, the 25 plus pounds, it's interesting to see them catch one, maybe two fish off a spot and then you'll see their track go to another spot, catch one, then they go over here. So that's why some of these guys have popped in with five. You know, maybe they were out of service, popped around, and then they did it. But definitely, uh, it takes three spots to catch five good ones, it seems. And for our, for our viewers on Bassmaster Live, really kind of going into tomorrow, going into Saturday, and this is something I got to talk to Livesey quite a bit about, is Livesey said this is one of those tournaments, a squatter, a guy that just gets on one place. If he's able to get on one place and left alone, Livesey said, look, there, there are 100 to 200 fish schools offshore right now. And Livesey said that he thought if a guy could do that and be left alone, that this tournament could be won on a one fish spot. But really looking at- Right, put on a hat, huh? the bulk of your leaders going into tomorrow they bounced around a lot more than was predicted oh, coming into this tournament start flying around and twisting i just pull out clumps of hair when i get back all just greased up right now bluegill or something. There he is. Uh -huh. Go on now. Oh yeah. Go on now. Getting after him. Promise sitting right in the boat lane. 
can't even be mad at him for that. Nope, can't do it. Sitting around where can't he's supposed do to be driving. Boy, and where he's at. I know a lot of our viewers that fish that area know that area. Those boat lanes right through there are windy and tight, Tommy Sanders. Yeah. I saw one that sort of mirrored a road that, that came down to the to the water's edge there. They just sort of continued the road as a yes. boat lane there. It was remarkably narrow seeming to me. I mean, it yes. was like Very you couldn't narrow. get a Volkswagen through it. There were some folks online, Z, trying to sell the boat lane guide for uh, Lake Fork with the water being low. Said, hey, I got you all the routes so you don't mess up your boat, but there might be a fee no, associated now. with it. Come on now. Yeah. What's your Give me a break yourself. Give me a break. <laughs> it's been really cool to look at all these Ray Scott pictures and all that memorabilia that we've gotten a chance Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. One thing I wanted to throw in there, we had some, some of the longtime veterans in here to talk about some Ray Scott memories the other day, and Bobby Murray made this point. I said, I said what, what's the first thing he did that really made a difference? He said the first thing he had to do when he got into tournament fishing and he wanted to well, take it to a wire and get people the, to take it seriously was to get these guys to police themselves rules wise. That, yeah, that playing fast and loose with the rules was kind of normalized <laughs> back in the days before the Bass Masters and he successfully yeah. got that done. That went a, a long, long way to legitimizing and bringing the sport to a wider audience. And Tommy, we, we've talked about this, is the one thing too. that you know on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the integrity of the rules was all for decades was talked about on this feel like that tournament trail. Yeah. You know Absolutely. What I'm talking about. I'd like to see that hold up throughout the professional fishing <laughs> industry. Yeah. yeah. Probably turn to the wind and just flops on you. Be like Ricky Klon from 1999. Got magic power. About to find out. Oops, never air. Just stay in your seat. Sorry about that. I land him on the back. I apologize. <laughs> There's 20 of them down there this size. <sighs> Thank you. We need to get her going. Oh, that's a good hook. Ready? Three, five. Three, two, three, three. Three, three. That rod from you. You're fine? It's on me. I'm the one. But no, when I hook one, I land all of them in the back, Lee. Okay. I apologize. We haven't had sure enough. Be at the bottom. We oh. haven't had enough practice today yet. <laughs> one, three upgrade for him. Get it sort of a two even. He'll go up to 14, 12. How about Matty Wong, Ronnie? He's 714. He's up to 27 pounds, even fifth place. Wow. I will get all the details of what he's throwing for, for the viewers for tomorrow. Yes, for sure. you will. We will Indeed. get it done. See what we can do. I can only imagine what he may be throwing, though. <laughs> Looked obvious. How much weight do I have? We're about to call it all out, but just curious. We always say that there are guys who catch them late um, and the next day their flight's early and they're not going to have that. Today it seems that some of those guys that are 12, 13, 14 pounds may end up with 20 at the end of the day because they're checking in at 4 o'clock. 
Eastern or Central yeah. Time. Yeah. May not be checking in. You know, they'll check in at three o'clock the next day. So you're gonna have to get to getting when you can. You look at the anglers who are below even that level, and a lot of Here surprises in there as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, my goodness, Brock Mosley, and, you know, Austin Felix, Ray Hanselman. You would have thought, you know, might have been something. Yeah, absolutely, you could have Brandon after. Lester, yeah. ten pounds. Yeah. Back to Lee Livesey. Say one of the biggest surprises this year, and Jason Christie said it. He'll he'll figure it out at some point. But Mike Iaconelli, 84th in points and 72nd. This is yes. really mm -hmm. hadn't connected. Exactly. Yeah. With, you know. And, and and this is a tournament that sets up for him. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of like the Conroe Classic, but just a little later, like the Fisher. You can catch him out deep, but uh -huh. if you want to be up there on the bank and. You can do that too. It's just a little opposite in the spectrum. Oh man, that sucks. Boy, you watch what he's doing right now. He is hunting individual big ones. If you really listen to the. Well, I don't. Knows this lake scary, obviously, oh, but scary, yeah, scary good. I'm just gonna make one little loop, see if they busted up or see if uh, they're still there. What's that thing he just, the lanyard just hooked up to, Tommy? Well, that's something that uh, is Ray, Ray Scott guides connected. All whites, yeah, but kill switch, yeah. Since we got what we got, it's worth a shot to see if I need to stop on it any other day. They moved from practice, which I never threw on when practice. Because it looked like mainly whites, but those monsters will get in here with them. off to Lee Livesey and all of our anglers that we spent time in the boat with today. It has been an exciting day and that's what you expect when you come to Lake Fork here in Texas. Just a, just a, a phenomenal, phenomenal place. Great stuff. Definitely remembering Ray Scott and everything he's done for the Bass Masters, Bass Master Elite Series. Fishing as a whole today oh, definitely lived up to one of those tournaments you know Ray would have gone crazy at uh, and it oh, is yeah. going to be one of those weekends here on Lake Fork that uh, place never ceases to amaze you. I don't know how much it's going to change day to day, but uh, of course you can't. Uh, the cushion that you mentioned that uh, Lee has put up for himself is going to serve him well, but uh, someone else will amaze us, I'm sure. Give us some intervals, oh, some yeah. great catches. There is no doubt about that. Hour by hour, it seems to change today. Don't forget, we have the weigh-in coming up at 4.15 Eastern, 4.10, excuse me, 4.10 Eastern time, right here on Bassmaster.com. A different sort of weigh-in, but get to see some big ones, right? Yeah, the ones that are over and 24 inches get brought into the weigh-in if you catch one. And what, it's going to be one of those deals, really watching Bass Track the last two hours. Those weights are going to go up even more than they are right now. Hoping for a big day tomorrow, and we will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, just as we were today for seven full hours of coverage for you. And this fifth stop of the year, dead middle of the season for the Bassmaster Elite Series, and what a place. Lake Fork has never, ever disappointed us, and this looks like a good one coming up as well. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern Time.